The story begins with a view of the monastery on Chifeng Mountain, where one day a guy shouts and asks if he should really leave, hoping that someone will answer him or stop him. The reason for the screams was the blue-haired guy, who continues to ask the residents whether it would be better for him to stay in order to take care of the elderly. The guy scratched his head and heard nothing in response to his screams, he realized for himself that it was really time to leave. Having not heard an answer, the guy began to move away from the place where, apparently, he was raised. The sound of an open gate and after a couple of moments the guy was already gone, obviously he was not very happy that he was leaving. At this time, the mentors were sitting and discussing the guy's departure, the military genius Cho Yuepiao jokingly asked Xiao Ming not to leave, realizing that the guy would not hear him, but the sage Qing Shouzang assured his colleague that he was already ready for an independent life. Introducing the leaving guy, alchemist Gung Buting recalled that Xiao Ming was always smart, he also talked about some seven girls who know how to act and hoped that the guy would not return to them. Coming out of the monastery gates, Xiao Ming still thought that his mentors were worried, they just didn't want to talk about it. It seemed to the guy that someone knocked on the gate from the backside, as if they were inviting him again. The guy laughed and thought that they were already a hundred years old, but they behaved like little girls. The guy knelt in front of the monastery, thanked him for his care and upbringing, after which he promised not to let him down and make his dream come true. The action moves to the station, where the guy was able to arrive, he was heading to the ticket office to buy a ticket. Already on the train, the guy, looking at his ticket, thought that he was lucky, because even a sleeping place was provided for him. Then the guy turned his gaze and attention to the pretty girl who was sitting in front of him. The girl was indignant at the guy's gaze and, covering her chest, asked why he was staring, as if he had never seen large breasts before. Xiao Ming moved away from the girl after the remark, but began to talk to her about her lingering melancholy, which leads to great consequences and can turn into pathology. The girl was a little surprised by the guy's knowledge of medicine and thought about how he made the diagnosis so quickly, because it took the doctors a lot of time yesterday to do this. The train continued on its way with passengers inside and Xiao Ming, who was looking for his compartment. The guy entered his compartment and immediately noticed that this place would be even better than his room, he was a little surprised, because mentors are usually greedy, but this time they spent a lot of money. Xiao Ming recalled the words of the Dr. Shen Hu, who was one of his mentors, who said that he should not only spread their teachings, but also get acquainted with the seven mentors who also went out into the outside world. He handed some kind of talisman to the guy and said that with the help of it they could recognize each other. The indignant guy did not want to go down anywhere or meet anyone, he said that he was happy here too. Shun who took out some kind of notebook, which apparently he found with the guy and was preparing to read it. Xiao Ming tried to snatch it from the doctor's hands, saying that he was simply interested in the traditions of Huaxia. The doctor dodged his student and decided to interest him, saying that each of the mentors in the outside world was an extraordinary beauty and the girls from the guy's book were not even close to them. The guy remembered all the pictures from his book, trying to imagine what could be better than those girls. The guy's opinion changed dramatically and with great enthusiasm he ordered to pack his things and he will move out tomorrow and will definitely find his sister mentors. The story returns to real time, where the guy sits on his sleeping bunk and thinks that at that moment he could not even imagine that he would actually be able to leave. Xiao Ming remembered that his mentor had given him pocket money and eagerly reached into his backpack to find it. He found the envelope and remembered Shun whose words that this was money for the first expenses, and when he met the seventh sister, she would take on all the expenses. With interest, he began to unpack the envelope with money, expecting to see a good amount there. The envelope contained 500 yuan, the guy was very happy about this, because on the mountain even 20 a month was enough for him, so he expected a luxurious life with such a sum. The guy heard a woman's voice outside the door of his compartment and immediately thought that he would have to travel with a companion. A beautiful girl, similar to those whom Xiao Ming had looked at in his books, entered the compartment, he explained to the guy that they would have to travel together. The guy was embarrassed by the beauty of the girl and wondered to himself whether everyone in the outside world was so beautiful and even dreamed that he would go alone with her. He felt sympathy for the young girl and realized that this was most likely the love affair he had read about on the forums. To the great regret of the guy, after the beautiful girl, an elderly man came into the compartment and the girl introduced him as her grandfather. Xiao Ming was upset by this outcome, 
he expected that he would be able to go alone with the beauty and quietly set a bummer. The friendly grandfather politely greeted the guy, raising his hand up and approaching him. Xiao Ming did not like his grandfather's voice, he suspected something was wrong with him and thought about problems in his chest. The guy sat in front of his old neighbor and asked him if he had felt any pain in his heart over the past few years. Here the granddaughter intervened in the conversation, who did not like the guy's words and assured that her grandfather did not have any problems. The grandfather himself was also outraged by the guy's words and thought that he was sucking up to him and young people had no morals, but only thoughts about the benefits of connections. The guy said that maybe he was just thinking a lot, but in his head he continued to talk about the old man's possible problems, he came to the conclusion that he had congenital heart failure. The girl climbed onto the top shelf, under the gaze of her neighbor, who thought that such a beautiful girl could also have a similar disease like her grandfather. The girl was wearing a short skirt and this greatly interested Xiao Ming, who had no previous relationships with the opposite sex. The guy immediately noticed this and tried to restrain himself from such an obscene look. At the moment, while his granddaughter was climbing up the stairs, the grandfather was overcome by pain in his heart and he grabbed his chest. Everyone in the compartment paid attention to this and grandfather could barely stand on his feet with groaning sounds. The concerned granddaughter tried to help him, trying to ask what was wrong with him and offered to bring him water, to which the grandfather replied that he was choking. The granddaughter put her grandfather on the bottom shelf, promising that she would come up with something now. She left the compartment and saw the conductor, whom she asked to urgently call a doctor. The conductor did not fully understand the girl's words and tried to say something in response, hinting that they did not have a doctor on the train. The young girl asked her to shut up and told her to urgently run for help, the conductor at one time ran to the other end of the carriage and promised to call a doctor over the loudspeaker, hoping that there would be a specialist among the passengers. The granddaughter returned to the compartment and took her grandfather by the hand, assuring him that help was on the way. The guy realized that if he could use his skills, he would save the old man, but his mentors taught him not to help everyone. Xiao Ming remembered the newspaper headlines, where they wrote that some people were condemned and fined for helping, they were also condemned on the internet, and he asked himself, is there any point in helping people? Grandfather continued to lie, holding his heart and suffering from pain. In addition to the newspaper headlines, Xiao Ming also remembered that his mentors taught him to be responsive. The good side still overpowered the guy and he said that he could help, but something interrupted him. He was interrupted by the conductor, who brought a man and said that she had found a doctor. The girl said it was great, but the guy stood awkwardly and hoped that no one heard him. The doctor asked what was wrong with the sick girl, looking at the girl. The girl explained that her grandfather had a congenital heart defect, but before it had not manifested itself in any way, she thought to herself why the doctor did not immediately examine the old man. The doctor stated that there were no medical instruments on the train and he could not make a diagnosis based only on the young girl's words and they would have to wait until the nearest station. The girl asked ere the doctor would order her grandfather to be taken for examination, she herself already understood that the doctor would not help. The doctor did not like the girl's persistence and said that without the latest equipment he would not be able to determine the patient's condition and prescribe his treatment. The girl continued to protest that there was nothing like that on the train. The doctor said that it was not his authority to make a diagnosis without examination, and he also added that he was a deputy at Jiangzhou Municipal Hospital. Xiao Ming looked at the doctor with disbelief and thought that no examination was needed, the doctor just didn't want to help in the first place. Grandfather was getting worse, and his granddaughter began to worry even more about his health. Terrified, Xiao Ming realized that the symptoms were getting worse, which meant that the old man would not last long. The girl almost on her knees began to beg the man to help her grandfather, at least with something. The man headed towards the exit and stated that without equipment he could not help the old man in any way, the girl saw him off with dissatisfied exclamations. When Dr. Jiang came out of their compartment, the conductor asked if he recognized the old man and his granddaughter. Having received a surprised look, she added that the patient was the same grandfather Yu, from whom the whole of Jiangzhou was in chaos. The surprised man asked the conductor if she was sure of this. She assured that this was accurate, because the names were written on the tickets, so it would be an excellent opportunity for the doctor to show his capabilities. The doctor turned around, realizing that this was a serious person and thanked him for such information. Entering the compartment, 
he apologized to the girl and told her that he was going to give his grandfather a heart massage. He climbed next to the man and told the grandfather to hold on, and the granddaughter did not understand why the doctor's attitude changed so dramatically. Xiao Ming pondered the doctor's actions, thinking that in case of cardiac arrest, the main thing is to restore the patient's ability to breathe, but this is not the case. Unable to bear it, the guy got up and shouted to the doctor to stop, because the old man could die, and this is not cardiac arrest, but exhaustion. The doctor turned towards the guy and noticed that the old man had lost consciousness, which meant that he needed to be woken up. The doctor arrogantly asked the guy who he was to condemn his treatment methods. Xiao Ming described himself as a follower of Chinese traditional medicine. Dr. Jiang asked him about traditional medicine and criticized it, saying that it was all a fallacy. He asked the naive guy if he believed that his outdated methods would be more accurate in determining the diagnosis than a doctor with 10 years of experience. The guy explained that if the doctor continues to massage the heart, the old man's chest will not stand it, the ribs will break and pierce the grandfather's heart. The doctor realized that the guy really understood this and his words could be considered reasonable, but what should he do then? Is this old man really that important? Just trying is enough, the doctor thought to himself. He assured the victim's granddaughter that he would try to find a way to save her grandfather, calling her MS, you. He realized that if the old man opened his eyes even for a short time, his granddaughter would still be very grateful to him. The girl asked herself how could the doctor know her name if she didn't say it herself. She realized that the conductor had told him about this when she called him over. Later, she looked at her neighbor and thought that the guy didn't know either her or her grandfather. She also thought that he made a diagnosis without any examinations and very quickly just by breathing. She asked a qualified doctor to stop in favor of the young guy. The doctor tried to convince the girl that human life was at stake and the guy could not be trusted. Mrs. Yu approached Xiao Ming and asked if his offer of help for grandfather was still valid. The guy said that he would try, but if you do everything that the doctor said, the old man will wake up for three days and then die. Xiao Ming looked towards the doctor and asked if he was right about his treatment. The girl looked at the guy with crying eyes and asked if her grandfather could be saved. The guy said that he could be helped, he was born with heart failure and due to his age, his heart became inflamed, but one session of acupuncture and the blood flow will normalize and the disease will subside for three months. The girl looked at the guy and asked if what he was saying was true. Without allowing the guy to answer, the conductor and the doctor intervened, advising him not to believe Xiao Ming, calling him a charlatan. The girl did not feel a sense of trust in the doctor, who replaced arrogance with respect after learning the status of her grandfather. The conductor and the doctor stood together and they were a little ashamed that their hypocrisy had been exposed. She turned to the guy and took his hands, as if she was going to ask him for something. The girl desperately asked Xiao Ming to help her and save her grandfather. Xiao Ming immediately decided to evaluate the girl for himself, she looked less than 20, she was younger than him, but did not seem so naive, the guy thought. He also noticed that even after revealing her status, she was still not afraid to ask him for help. Outwardly, she was charming, but she had an extraordinary inner world, the guy remembered that his mentors called such cuties by contrast. The guy decided to put aside his thoughts about the beauty for a while and invited her to start helping her grandfather. The doctor protested, arguing that the guy looked younger than 20 and wasn't the girl afraid that he wouldn't be able to cope, and the conductor was outraged that a young man could be entrusted with such responsibility. The girl asked the guy, who was looking for something in his backpack, if he knew exactly what he was doing and received an affirmative answer. The guy found his acupuncture kit and assured the girl that while in the mountains he often trained on wild boars and brought one female boar back to life. They were horrified to learn that the guy was practicing on wild boars, the guide tried to dissuade Mrs. You from this idea. The doctor laughed a little at the guy's words and thought that he was a hillbilly who had never worked with people. The doctor began to watch all this with interest, assuming that the guy would not cope and the Yu family would take revenge on him for this. He took the shirt off the old man's chest and asked him not to worry and to be patient a little. After he tore a button on his shirt, he also warned that this method was very painful and the old man should be prepared for it. He brandished his set of Chinese needles for the painful procedure. Even though Xiao Ming had never practiced this in public, his actions looked dexterous and skillful, and it seemed as if this was an ordinary thing for him. After some time, 
grandfather was already lying with a couple of needles in the place where he had a heart attack. The boy took out another needle and assured the old man, who was lying almost unconscious, that this was the last one. He stuck it into the old man's chest, expecting him to wake up after that. Indeed, the old man, either from pain or from healing, showed signs of life and even screamed. Continuing his screams, the old man was able to get up and a pool of blood had already formed under him. The conductor was afraid that old man Yu was bleeding from his mouth, and the granddaughter immediately went up to her grandfather and asked if everything was okay? A qualified doctor asked the guy if he had done everything correctly and suggested that such methods would rather lead to the old man's grave than help him recover. The impudent boy turned towards the doctor, showed two fingers and told him to be patient. The indignant doctor asked the guy how dare he dare him, he continued to think that Xiao Ming was an ordinary hillbilly. But then he was seized by a real shock, he could not believe what he saw. The old man's spirit seemed to return to his body and he was able to move from a lying position to a sitting position, the doctor did not understand how this was possible. The guy approached his grandfather and explained that blood had come out of him, which meant that there were no more blockages, he also advised him to be more careful and carry medicine with him. A man with needles in his chest held his granddaughter's hand and thanked his savior. He missed a lot of recent events, so looking at the doctor and the conductor, he asked who they were. The frightened doctor and guide introduced themselves and said that they had been called to help the grandfather. He was surprised by what they said and asked again if they had really come to cure him. Pointing to the joyful Xiao Ming, the grandfather asked how it happened that this young man saved him. The conductor did not know what to answer, and the doctor, who still did not believe in traditional medicine, said that it was an accident, after which he offered to go to his hospital for treatment. Old Yu looked towards his savior and asked him if he needed to go to the hospital. The angry doctor was outraged that advice was being asked from someone who treated with needles and thought to himself that he was being humiliated. The guy who was preparing to pull the needles out of the old man's body hesitantly said that he thought going to the hospital would be unnecessary. In front of the humiliated doctor, the grandfather listened to the young man's words and said that if it wasn't necessary, he wouldn't do it. The conductor took hold of the doctor's sleeve and invited him to leave, because there was nothing left for them to do. The irritated doctor shooed the conductor away and assured her that he still needed something here. He thought to himself that success was already close, but because of the young man, nothing worked out for him. The guy suggested that the grandfather pull the needles out of him, and he also added that he would do it painlessly. The old man agreed and invited the guy to start. Grandfather closed his eyes for a couple of seconds, after which he felt something and opened them. The old man didn't have time to feel anything when he heard the guy's words that he was finished. The old man also noticed that everything was so fast that he didn't even have time to blink. The grandfather asked his granddaughter to give his business card to the guy so that upon arrival in Jiangzhou he could thank him with a delicious dinner. The girl handed over her grandfather's business card and thanked the guy for the work done. The girl modestly said that there was no need to thank him, his mentors taught him to be responsive, and upon arrival in Jiangzhou they could all go somewhere together and he would treat them. The guy told the couple that he had heard a lot about the outside world and that there was a place here that served fried chicken. The girl and granddaughter burst into laughter after listening to the guy's proposals, the granddaughter even thought to herself that they were being joked about. The angry doctor returned to the compartment, who shouted at the guy and demanded that he show his medical diploma. If he did not provide it today, he would have to deal with the police. The angry doctor, after making threats, began to insult and humiliate Xiao Ming, calling him a pseudo-doctor. Xiao Ming asked his professional colleague not to wave his arms, otherwise the police would get to him. Outraged by the guy's impudent answer, the doctor showed the police number on his phone and added that practicing medicine without a license is punishable by up to 10 years in prison. Immediately after this, the train stopped abruptly. The guys were almost knocked off their feet by such a sharp breaking and they stood waiting to hear something from the loudspeaker. Immediately, from the loudspeaker, one of the conductors said that this was an emergency stop and asked everyone to remain calm and not leave their seats, granddaughter you thought something was wrong. Two police officers entered the carriage and, trying to calm the passengers, said that this was a routine inspection. The doctor introduced himself, giving his name and position, after which he added that there was a person in the carriage who treated people without a license and pointed to Xiao Ming. The police asked the confident doctor whether he was Jiang Buguang. 
He confirmed this, after which he became worried about how he could interest human rights activists. As Xiao Ming smirked, the police handcuffed the doctor's hands. They suspected him that he was collaborating with pharmaceutical companies that supply low-quality drugs, their medicine causes serious side effects, including blindness, the policeman added. The doctor continued to make excuses, saying that the police had made a mistake, and a pleased Xiao Ming confirmed the art of contemplating qi and realized that everything was heading towards this from the beginning. The girl remembered that the guy said that he would be arrested, she asked how he could predict this? The guy brushed off the girl's question and said that he just guessed without explaining anything. He thought to himself that each technique of the seven masters had magical powers, so it was better to keep his mouth shut, and he remembered that after all, he had an assignment. The girl sat down next to the guy and asked him with interest, if he is so quick-witted, can he predict what awaits her in the future? Grandfather admired the guy, he noticed that he was not arrogant and did not commit rash acts, a real talent, the old man thought about Xiao Ming. The guy noticed that the girl smelled delicious and didn't look like a wild boar at all, realizing that she looks just like in his novel, which one of his mentors took away from him. The guy became a little interested in the girl and said that he would not look into the future, but warned her to beware of people in green clothes. The girl caught the guy and asked how he could warn, but not predict, and after that she added that she knew that people practicing Chinese traditional medicine could see people's destinies and asked him to tell her everything. The guy carefully refused the girl, saying that he could not do this, to himself he thought about her beautiful body and appearance, realizing that it could not be compared with the book. Grandfather asked the persistent Lin Lin not to bother the guy and asked if it was possible to cure his congenital disease? The guy was distracted from the girl's appearance and assured the old man that he had such a method, he would need to take the medicine for three months and the illness would go away. The surprised old man asked if the guy was speaking seriously now, he did not believe that his illness was being treated. Xiao Ming asked his grandfather to wait, after which he reached into his backpack, Lin Lin looked and thought that he wanted to get it out of there again. The guy took out a brush and a piece of paper, after which he promised to write everything for his grandfather. Looking at this, the girl was surprised that there are still people left who write with a brush. She noticed over the writing table that it was probably inconvenient for him to write in this way. The guy explained that the senior mentor said that the brush is a legacy of Confucian teachings, despite the fact that pencils and pens are indeed more convenient. He also went on to say that someone must continue to paint with an awkward brush or else they will not be able to restore tradition. The girl was fascinated by the guy with his behavior, he considered him strange and extraordinary, she realized that you wouldn't meet someone like him in the city. The guy finished writing with a brush, after which he handed the paper to the old man and said that he had finished writing the recipe and added that his family members would also do well to take the medicine if the disease was hereditary. The surprised old man accepted the recipe from the guy and asked how he knew that the disease was congenital. The guy assured his grandfather that he had simply drawn conclusions based on his diagnosis, his mentor told him that people in high positions tend to work hard with their heads, which is why aneurysms are a common occurrence for them. Grandfather was surprised when he heard these words from the young guy, he was not used to hearing something like that from young people. Specifically, the old man was surprised by the guy's words that the old man works a lot, because people tend to consider directors and managers as slackers, he was enveloped in memories and he compared his business to a ship, and himself to the captain. Having finished with his thoughts, the old man realized that the guy was very wise for his age. The grandfather thanked the guy by holding out his hands in front of him and said that if his recipe turned out to be effective, he would express gratitude on behalf of his entire family. The guy responded to the old man's outstretched hands and wished him to always remain healthy. The grandfather asked his granddaughter to take the business card from the guy that she had given earlier. The girl reluctantly approached the guy and asked for the business card back at the request of her grandfather. The surprised guy handed it into the girl's hands and thought to himself that they were somehow strange, first they give their contacts, then they take them away. Lin Lin took the business card from her new friend's hands. He handed it to his grandfather, confirming that he had taken it. The grandfather asked his granddaughter to add the guy's contact to WeChat Messenger, to which she readily agreed. The guy didn't fully understand what they wanted from him, but the girl took out her phone. The girl said that the guy could scan her code in order to add her to his contacts. Lin Lin held out her phone with the code on the screen to the confused guy. Not understanding the girl's words, 
the guy asked what exactly does it mean to scan. The girl tried to explain that it was a QR code, but the guy still couldn't understand what was being asked of him. He reached into his pants pocket to pull out his phone. Unlike the girl's brand new smartphone, the guy took out his push-button phone, which greatly surprised her, because Lin Lin had not seen such phones for a long time. The guy explained that one of his mentors gave him this phone so that he could search for information on the internet and that thanks to this, all the information in the world was open to him. The girl didn't understand Xiao Ming's admiration for his phone, so she asked if he had WeChat and asked him to scan the code. The guy, not understanding the girl's words, began to talk about the most authoritative and rich mentor, to whom everyone listens, but the girl tried to explain what she meant by the social network on her phone. The guy didn't understand how there could be any other social networks on his phone. The grandfather was tired of the awkward explanations and asked his daughter not to embarrass the young man, but to simply exchange phone numbers. The girl asked the guy for his phone number and then added it to her contacts. She told Xiao Ming that everything was ready and she had his contact to communicate in the future. Lin Lin also added that as soon as they arrive in Jiangzhou, she will call him and invite him to eat. The girl also said that if a guy wants to eat fried chicken, he should definitely call. The guy was happy about this news and promised that he would definitely call the girl. The grandfather looked at how his granddaughter communicated with his savior and admitted that he was mistaken about the guy, thinking that he was an ordinary scoundrel, but noticed that it was too early to sign him up as a groom. The old man thought about his daughter's wedding and realized that if she was a member of his family and she was being closely watched from the Wang family. The old man was considering that his family might marry off their granddaughter for profit. Letting go of his thoughts, he told himself that there was no need to rush things. Xiao Ming noticed that the old man's face changed, trying to understand what could upset him so much. He asked his grandfather what was bothering him, hinting at his help. The old man smiled and assured the guy that he was just thinking about little things and was very glad that he had met him. The guy gave some motivating words to the old man and assured him that everything he wished for would definitely come true. The old man was delighted at the guy's words, realizing that he was speaking from the heart. Grandfather thanked his savior for such kind words. After the old man's thanks, the guy turned to Lin Lin and repeated the words about people in green clothes, because otherwise trouble would not be avoided. The girl did not understand what the guy was getting at and said that he was mistaken. Morning came, the train had already arrived at Jiangzhou Station and the announcer announced this through the loudspeaker. Xiao Ming was carrying a heavy suitcase for his new friend. Xiao Ming noticed that the suitcase was very heavy and asked Lin Lin if it really belonged to her. The girl confirmed that the suitcase was hers and playfully noted that fortunately there was a person who was helping to carry it, and the grandfather said that their friend Lin Lin should meet them and once again thank the guy for his help. The onlookers looked at the guy and noticed that the suitcase was really heavy and some guys said that it was very troublesome to have a girlfriend, and Xiao Ming insisted that it was no heavier than two bamboo trunks and it was not difficult for him to drag it. The girl tried to find the familiar face of her friend with her eyes, but could not, after which she said that she should already be here. Immediately after the girl's words, a white car drove up. The car parked near the guys, Lin Lin expected it to be her friend. The first thing that came out of the door was a girl's foot in open summer shoes with a high platform. Later, the girl got out of the car completely, she was very beautiful and in a spectacular green dress. The friend's name was Chu Ying, she asked Lin Lin if she had been waiting for her. Remembering Xiao Ming's words, Lin Lin became alert and shouted out in fear. She asked her new friend if she could somehow hush up this situation, trusting the guy's words, which until recently seemed like nonsense. The guy said in surprise that there is one way, after which he asked if Chu Ying would be embarrassed to undress right here. The surprised girl looked excitedly towards her friend. Chu Ying did not understand what was happening and what her friend and a guy unfamiliar to her wanted from her. Lin Lin continued to look at her friend in bewilderment. The girl asked Xiao Ming if her friends really needed to take off their clothes to avoid problems. The guy said that the green dress the girl was wearing was the only problem and should be replaced. The girl, with relief, asked Xiao Ming that if her friend changed clothes, then everything would be fine, to which she received an affirmative answer. Chu Ying looked at the couple and tried to understand why her friend Lin Lin, who usually keeps guys at a distance, was being so nice to this hillbilly. She continued to look at the guy, intently, trying to understand who he was. The girl was distrustful of her friend's new acquaintance, 
so she immediately thought that he was another scoundrel who wanted to deceive her naive friend. Lin Lin walked up to her friend and said that she needed to say something, Chu Ying also wanted to say something. Chu Ying began her sentence, trying to tell something about her new acquaintance, but could not finish her thought. But she was interrupted by Lin Lin, who interrupted her friend and anxiously asked her if she could change her green dress. The girl was surprised by her friend's words and she asked again, not believing her ears what she heard. Lin Lin took her friend by the hand and asked her to change clothes, assuring her that there was definitely something beautiful in her trunk. Chu Ying sighed heavily, wondering if she should do this, not understanding why her friend was asking her to change her clothes. The girl nevertheless agreed and followed to the car, but asked Lin Lin to go with her. Lin Lin was delighted with her friend's understanding and agreed to go with her. The girls were already sitting in the car, where Chu Ying was looking for new clothes and getting ready to change. The girl, taking off the straps of her green dress, asked her friend what connected her with that young man. Lin Lin, not understanding who she was talking about, tried to find out from her friend who exactly she meant. Dressed in a black dress, Chu Ying pointed out to her friend that there weren't many guys there and she should know who they were talking about. The girl looked out the car window to find the guy and point to him, but saw that her grandfather was standing alone. She asked her friend in surprise where he could have disappeared to. Lin Lin explained that they met on the train and also wondered where he could have gone. Chu Ying, while putting on stockings, tried to warn her friend to be careful and not let herself be deceived. Having finished with the stockings, the girl added that the most inconspicuous ones usually turn out to be scammers. The upset Lin Lin noticed that the guy left and didn't even say goodbye to her, but her friend looked at her facial expressions and was already sure that Lin Lin had fallen in love with an unfamiliar guy. Having escaped from his acquaintances, Xiao Ming remembered his mentor's words that a worthy person would not spy on others. Based on the advice of his mentor, the guy decided to leave the company of his friends and the old man. The guy built a route on the maps of his phone and remembered that his mentors left him an apartment on the outskirts of the city, away from the hustle and bustle. The guy wanted to see where exactly this place was, after which a yellow car stopped in front of him. It was a taxi, the man behind the wheel offered his services to the guy and added that they would get there in no time. The surprised guy heard from the phone that he was 13 and 4 kilometers from his destination, he was surprised to pronounce this number out loud. The taxi driver expected a profit and said to himself that the distance was quite long and an ignorant person would not be able to get there on his own. The man pointed to the door of his car and invited the young man to jump in with him. The guy thanked the driver, but assured him that he did not need a taxi. The surprised driver asked the guy, is he going to walk the entire distance? The guy got ready for a leisurely run and confirmed the driver's words, noting that these were just flowers for him. He also added that he covered much greater distances in the mountains. Xiao Ming got ready and the guy's leading foot was already standing on one toe of his shoe. The guy immediately took off sharply, after which there was no trace of him from the place where he was communicating with the taxi driver. The taxi driver didn't even have time to glance at the nimble guy. The surprised man, after this action from the guy, tried to come to his senses and understand what had just happened. The guy ran very quickly, checking his route with the GPS on his phone. He ran at the speed of lightning, leaving behind a wind that raised the wind among the passers-by. A few minutes later the guy was already on the outskirts of the city in some outback. The voice from the phone told the guy that he was already at his destination and asked him to pay the fines for speeding in a timely manner. He was already standing in front of the house in which he was supposed to live, he looked around. His gaze rushed towards the front door of the apartment building. The guy read on the sign that this is the Hongsha residential complex. The old man sitting next to him corrected the guy and said that this is the Hongshan complex. He explained to the guy that half the word was erased on the sign. The guy made sure he came to the right place and thanked the old man. Grandfather noticed that this was another young man who would live here, and his wife suggested that the guy came to work. The old man reminded his wife that it was a two-hour bus ride to the city center. While the guy was heading to the front door, the grandfather also told his old lady that young people now are very persistent, not like at their age. The guy remembered the words of his mentor, who said that he had found an apartment with free Wi-Fi, water and electricity meters and fast internet. The guy continued to climb the stairs, remembering the words of his mentor. Chu Ming remembered how his mentor complained about the internet in the mountains, which made it impossible to watch even a short movie. 
The guy was looking forward to how fast the internet would be in his new house and was already looking for his apartment on the right floor. On one of the doors the guy saw the number 6 fraction 2, thinking that this was definitely his apartment. He made sure he had come to the right place and prepared to knock on doors. The guy knocked on the front door, expecting it to be quickly opened. The guy kept knocking on the door and asked what meters he was told about and what they were. After some attempts by the guy, the door finally opened. Qin Yen, a pretty girl with a cigarette in her hands, came out to the guy and asked who was bothering her. The guy's gaze immediately turned to the girl's body, he saw something that he definitely liked. The reason for the guy's interest was the girl's open breasts, from which he could not take his eyes off. Chu Ming introduced himself, then added that she was talking about renting an apartment. The girl bit her lip a little, noticing the guy's interest in her. The girl also introduced herself, saying that her name was Qin Yen and she was his landlord. The girl led the guy along the corridor and explained where he was, after which she said that he could use the kitchen at any time, but that he should not dry his things on the terrace. She led him to the place where things were dried and explained that on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays this place would be his. There were women's underwear hanging on the lines, a lot of which could mean that Chu Ming would have neighbors. The guy was surprised that there were so many women's clothes and underwear that he was even a little scared. The woman asked the guy what he was staring at, hinting that he shouldn't look at other people's underwear that way. The guy was a little embarrassed and looked away from there, without showing any interest. He told the beautiful landlord that he would rather go to his place and settle down a little. The guy went to his room and then opened the door to it. What the guy saw shocked him, he clearly did not expect such a situation in his room. He saw a bed in the room on which women's underwear, stockings and other clothes were scattered. Qin Yen walked up to the guy from behind and explained that this was her room so that he wouldn't be scared. The guy felt awkward, he loudly apologized to the girl and hurriedly went to his room. The door slammed, and the owner looked in the direction where her new neighbor had gone. The beauty continued to bite her lip while thinking about Chu Ming. For herself, she decided that the guy was simple-minded, reserved, but handsome in appearance. It wasn't every day that she could see a neat boy. Immediately the door to the hostess's room opened again. The new neighbor most likely had more questions that the girl did not answer. The guy asked what the password for Wi-Fi in the house was. The smoking beauty named the numbers that were the password for the shy boy. Immediately the guy directed his gaze towards the beauty, freezing a little in front of him. The girl, noticing this, also decided to respond in kind and looked at the guy with interest. The girl seemed to be flirting with the shy guy with her eyes, and they stood looking at each other, but didn't say anything. The guy thanked the hostess, after which he left the room in a hurry and slammed the door behind him. The girl noticed that Chu Ming was very cute when he was embarrassed and she definitely liked it. Qin Yen put out the cigarette butt and put it in the ashtray. She liked the guy, but he assured herself that he was not destined to be like that with her. Night in his new apartment, the guy was finally able to rest after a busy day. The guy lay down in his bed, opposite the window, and assured himself with relief that he was finally able to settle down. The guy's thoughts were directed at the girls he met today, he noticed that they were really more beautiful in the city than in his books. The guy reached into his pocket for the talisman that the senior mentor had given him. He took it out and began to examine it, after which he became interested in what kind of person the elder seventh sister was. He raised his left hand and decided to try the art of fortune telling in order to find out at least something about it. The guy sat in his position and began to wonder how he was taught in the monastery. He decided to focus and tried to learn more about her through his skills. He saw the silhouette of a girl and said that she had a lot of money and he saw that she was a business person. Afterwards the guy tried to figure out why he didn't see more about her. He snapped his finger, expecting to see something more. The guy writhed in pain and came to the conclusion that the seven masters joined forces to hide the life force of the elder sister and he would not be able to find out detailed information about her. The guy thought that if the sister was a business person, then he could go online to find out more about the seventh sister. A moment later, the guy couldn't find any detailed information and decided that people were all so old and wrong. The guy realized that he couldn't take the shortcut and would have to think of another way. Then the guy's thoughts about girls were interrupted by his growling stomach, which hinted that Chu Ming had not eaten for a long time. The guy decided for himself that he should now have something to eat and left his room. Chu Ming came to the kitchen and asked himself if Qin Yen was at home, 
then he said to himself that living with a girl would still be awkward and he should be careful. The guy quietly, trying not to create noise, walked further through the kitchen. The guy walked up to the stove and asked himself whether it was gas, and then began to stand over it. Chu Ming remembered looking at how to use it on his phone. The guy took hold of the handle, after which he realized that it was his first time using it and he was not sure that he would succeed. The burner on the stove caught fire, after which the guy was a little happy. The joyful guy noticed that everything worked out and felt that he was managing to live in the outside world. After the guy lit the burner on the stove, he poured water into the pan. Later, he started preparing the noodles for dipping in boiling water. A cheerful and joyful guy cut vegetables, used seasonings and continued to prepare his own dinner. After some attempts, the guy was able to cook his own food for the first time. The joyful guy put his dish on the table and looked forward to eating in the outside world for the first time, rejoicing in his culinary endeavors. The guy began to eat what he had prepared and he clearly liked his dish. Chu Ming continued to eat alone in the kitchen of his new apartment, but something suddenly alerted him. The guy suddenly realized that now the house was surprisingly very quiet and it even bothered him a little. He kept trying to catch even the slightest sound of their kitchen, but he couldn't. The guy realized that in the mountains he had never been in such silence and had never dined alone. Memories came flooding back to him, the loud conversations of his mentors, their laughter and jokes, Chu Ming even missed them a little. Then the door handle jerked down and the door began to open with a crunch, the guy was distracted by this. While finishing his dinner, Chu Ming thought that if the door was opened with a key, then most likely the beautiful hostess had returned. Qin Yen entered the house, led by her friend's shoulder, the girls were dressed openly. The friend was surprised when she saw the guy in the kitchen and decided to ask him who he was and what he was doing in Qin Yan's apartment. The guy tried to introduce himself and explain himself, but he didn't have time, the girl didn't listen to him. He threw Qin Yan's body and assured the guy that he had nothing to do with her behavior and knew nothing, after which he quickly ran away. The surprised guy looked at the girl, and then asked if he looked like a bad person. Chu Ming looked at the drunken body of the hostess for a long time and noticed that she had a strong smell of wine and tried to understand what he should do, should he put her on the bed? Later, the guy was a little horrified when he looked at Qin Yan's half-dead body. He bent down to her and took her by the back of her head, trying to lift her closer to him, he expected something bad. After examining the girl's body, he came to the conclusion that it was as if someone had drugged her. Chu Ming didn't understand how someone could be so cruel as to drug a girl to such a state. He held Qin Yan's head and concluded that she had been given very powerful drugs. Here, right in the guy's arms, the girl woke up and began to show signs of life. The girl began to cough loudly and painfully, and something began to come out of her mouth. The girl vomited the pills they had given her and they fell to the floor, it was hard to imagine how much drugs she had been given. The interested guy picked up one of the pills that flew out of Qin Yan's mouth and realized that it was a hallucinogen that she was taking. He brought it closer to his eyes and noticed that they had a very large dosage. The girl said that the attackers were pursuing only one idea and asked her new neighbor to call an ambulance and a doctor. The guy suggested that it was too late to call an ambulance. The drugs she took had exceeded the dosage, which means the kidneys had already begun to dissipate. After he explained the problem, he added that she had no more than 10 minutes to live. The girl didn't really trust the guy's words, but she had no other choice and she clearly regretted taking drugs. As she was dying, the girl screamed that she couldn't move, but didn't want to die. Qin Yen was reminded of how the guys from the club manipulated her and offered to drink a glass of wine with pills or she would be kicked out. The beauty cried and was very sorry that she just wanted to have a good time, but received real torture. The girl was flooded with memories of how a mother abandoned her daughter and called her a tool for exchanging money. The mother leaves and asks the girl to leave her behind so she can enjoy life. The guy looked at the girl near death and thought whether it was worth helping her, the person who committed the crime should not be kind and saving her could bring a lot of trouble. But then the choice of help outweighed him and he said that doctors are kind and should help people. Chu Ming took Qin Yan's hand and was already preparing to give her the necessary assistance. He explained to the girl that he could save her and that she should not worry. Qin Yan was suspicious of this idea, not understanding the guy's abilities, but she had no choice. The guy felt the girl's pulse and realized that it was still normal, which means he just needed to remove the poison from the body. The guy began to take off the girl's dress, 
to which she immediately received a remark from her. The indignant girl, unable to resist, thought that her neighbor wanted to take advantage of her body and decided that all men were the same and wished death on all the guys. Chu Ming took out his acupuncture kit to help the dying beauty. The guy was looking for his tool and said that the most pressing task was removing toxins. He took out a small scalpel that looked more like a knife and chose it as a tool for his work. He twirled it in his hand, and then prepared it for the operation, placing it in his palm. He placed a sharp scalpel next to the girl's stomach and asked her to wait a little. The girl screamed in pain, not fully understanding what was happening to her. A slight movement of the fingers and the cut was already on the girl's body, bright, red blood flowed out of it. After this, the guy immediately began to stitch up the wound, hastily, so that a lot of blood would not leak out of it. After the operation, he cleaned his scalpel and was preparing to say something to the girl. Sitting on his knees in front of the body of the lying girl, he said that everything would be fine with her, she would just need to rest for a couple of days. The girl really felt dramatically better, and looking at the wound, she asked Chu Ming what he did to her. Before the girl had time to receive an answer, she found herself in the guy's arms. The guy, holding the girl in his arms, explained that this was an operation to remove the toxin before it got into the heart and it would be easy for her to survive. The girl was surprised by such a noble act on the part of her new neighbor and thought to herself, how can he be a really good person? The guy with the girl in his arms left the kitchen, heading to Qin Yan's room. Entering her room, he turned on the light and laid her gently on the bed, trying not to make sudden movements. Chu Ming asked the girl to rest, after which he said that he would clean the house for now. The girl wanted to express gratitude to her caring neighbor and say something to him, but she was interrupted by a knock on the door. Her friend banged on the door of the room screaming and shouted that she had brought help in the person of Brother Hao, who wanted to see the girl. The man outside the door asked Qin Yan's friend if she was sure that she had seen the guy or if he would find his ex again. Qin Yan was outraged that Hao dared to come to her home, and Chu Ming stood there and tried to think about everything that was happening. Chu Ming asked if Qin Yan wanted him to open the door and let the guests in. He was already heading towards the door and noticed that a friend had also brought her home. Qin Yan stopped the guy with a shout and explained that everyone there was bad people and it was better for them not to come here. She explained that they drugged her and harmed her, after which she began to tell her memories. The girl makes a living by running a bar not far from here and her story begins from there. Today she came to the bar and, as always, opened the doors and got to work, standing behind the bar. But her friend Zhang Qian brought a notorious villain and a nearby scoundrel to the bar. He handed her an impressive amount of cash on the bar counter. The girl, pouring a drink, greeted the guy, calling him Brother Hao. He asked for the strongest drink, and Zhang Qian said that this is a big client and he needs to be served the best alcohol. Although she knew about the guy's bad reputation, she still opened the door for him to continue running his business, she poured him alcohol. The friend called Yen over, saying that she had something she wanted to talk about. She told her friend in plain text that Hao wanted to spend the night together and was offering great money for it, all she needed was the girl's consent, Qian assured. The girl refused the offer and loudly declared that she was only selling alcohol, not her body. The dissatisfied friend was not ready for such an answer, and decided that Yen had only recently opened a bar, and already considered herself a serious person. Hao stood behind the girls and realized that he would have to deal with all the problems on his own. He took out two tablets and said in his head that one of these could drive even a cow crazy. He put them in a glass of alcohol and assured himself that after two tablets the woman would turn into a juicer. The pills were barely noticeable in the red thick of the wine, after the guy prepared his cocktail, he headed to the bar. Hao threatened the girl a little, saying that if you don't respect him, there will be serious consequences, but she's lucky he's kind today. He asked the girl to drink a glass of alcohol and he would pretend that nothing happened. But he also threatened that if she refused, her bar would be closed today. Yen herself thought unflatteringly about her guest and believed that she was kind to him, but he dared to threaten her. She snatched the glass of alcohol from Hao's hands and agreed to his proposal to forget everything. The girl said that she would drink alcohol, after which she brought it to her lips. In front of a pleased Hao, she drank a cocktail that contained poison. The story returned to real time, where the girl complains about her friend, saying that she always had a great relationship with her and she allowed her to come to her bar to earn money. 
She noticed that the guy was eating a watermelon and asked him if he was listening to her at all and where did he get the watermelon. Chu Ming replied that he took the berry from the refrigerator, after which he asked again should he open the door or call the police. The girl asked to open the door, she wanted to see how thick-skinned they were. She also asked the guy to come with her because Yen herself felt weak in her legs and had difficulty walking. Chu Ming willingly approached the beauty and stood waiting for her to take hold of him. The girl stood up to the guy, after which he grabbed her body, helping her move. The door opened with unexpected guests and an interesting meeting was being prepared. Hao stood with a joyful Zhang Qian and asked why she took so long to open the door. The guy stood with the phone in his hands, and Yen indignantly asked how they had the audacity to come to her house after all this. Qian started pointing her finger at Ming, accusing him of stealing everything from her house. The indignant boy immediately objected that he had not stolen anything and that the unexpected guests would be held responsible for slander. The girl told the guy that no one would be responsible for him and asked him to let her friend go. She called Qin Yan over and tried to prove that they would help her. The girl put her palm on Minu's chest and said that this was her boyfriend and she told him everything, about drugs and the police would come here soon. Qian began to deny that someone had drugged the girl and said that it could have been anyone, but definitely not them. Hao stood and was perplexed at how the girl, after such a large dose, could stay awake and calmly stand on her feet. Yen didn't know how to answer them, so she asked Chu Ming to intervene and convince the guests to leave here. He asked the hostess if these were the people who had harmed her and heard an affirmative answer. He told his neighbor that these were bad people and he would help her teach them a lesson, but Yen did not understand what the guy meant. Chu Ming extended his hand to Hao and introduced himself as Qin Yan's boyfriend. Yen herself did not understand how a guy could say hello to scoundrels who were clearly trying to harm her. Hao, despite his doubts, responded to the handshakes and said that if he was her boyfriend, he had made a really good deal. Min naively said that his girlfriend was actually drugged, but who did it is not yet clear, he thanked the couple for coming to visit her. Hao didn't understand what exactly the guy meant and what he was hinting at. Afterwards, Chu Ming looked towards Qian and thanked her for bringing her back home. Qian stood and looked at the couple, trying to understand at what point her friend had a boyfriend. Later, he mistakenly thought that this child was just trash who could stand next to him and smile. The guy continued his conversation and said that there must be surveillance in the bar, so they will recognize the intruder when they look at him. He continued his version and assured the guests that when he finds out who did this, he will transfer all the information and data to the police. Hao was quite frightened by this news and realized that he had completely forgotten about the cameras and decided that he needed to somehow get rid of the evidence. He clicked his shoes together before turning around and starting to walk away. He explained that he remembered some important matters and he urgently needed to leave, but Qian tried to stop him. Then Hao called out to Chu Ming, who wanted to tell him something on the way. Hao asked the guy what he wanted and if he needed to say something, then let him do it quickly. Ming started to get smart and say that men can't rely on just their lower body to think because it might be out of order. Min added to the surprised guy that he may not realize this. The outraged bully turned around and asked the guy to take care of his lower body. Hao thought that immediately after destroying the video cameras, he would return and deal with the impudent boy. The bandit promised himself that he would make the guy's life worse than death. Ming asked his owner if she wanted him to get the evidence from the cameras faster than Hao. In response, he heard that Hao was unpunished and would serve a maximum of three months for this crime, and if she wanted to live here, then it was better not to anger him. Then the guy offered to take the girl into the room and offered her something to eat, assuring her that he knew how to cook. The girl said that she had not eaten noodles prepared by others for a long time, but there was a lot of alcohol in it, after which she began to laugh a little. Min advised the girl not to laugh, otherwise the seams might come apart, and she apologized. The hands of the evil Hao break the memory card stolen from the Yen bar. The naked guy in bed with Qian said that now no one can prove anything, which means that he is safe. Immediately, the guy's girlfriend gently and playfully began stroking the back of the guy's head with her foot. A beautiful girl was lying in a sexy position, she asked the guy not to worry about it and assured that she would help him get rid of his anger tonight. The guy picked up the girl's idea and approached her, touching her bare shoulder. He carefully grabbed Qian's waist and told her that she would be in big trouble that night, because he was very angry. The happiness did not last long and after a couple of seconds the couple finished with all their business. The girl held her chest and got off the guy, 
who was very exhausted. She looked at Hao's groin area and asked him what was the matter and what was happening. The guy replied that everything was fine with him yesterday, but today something was wrong. He remembered Chu Ming's words that you couldn't always rely on your lower body alone. Immediately the guy was enveloped by some thought that he could not yet say out loud. He decided that the child who cursed him could be to blame for his problems with men's health. The story moves to Yan's house, where just a couple of minutes ago there were uninvited guests. That same evening, the lights were still on in Yan's house and the couple was getting ready to have dinner. The guy brought the girl noodles, which he prepared himself and decided to feed her, she praised him, saying that the food smelled delicious. The girl began to eat with a special appetite and it was clear from her look that she liked it. The guy asked how it tasted, expecting the hostess to praise him for his culinary skills. The girl praised her neighbor and said that it was very tasty and she had not eaten such noodles for a long time. The guy asked if there was really anyone in the house who could cook for the girl. The girl continued to eat, not paying attention to the awkward question from the guy. The guy continued to persistently look towards Yen, waiting for an answer. Yen realized that she couldn't ignore the guy, so she replied that she no longer had a family. She continued her thought by saying that her father died very early, and her mother abandoned her and ran away, after which she ended up and grew up in an orphanage. The guy assured that he was also an orphan, but did not understand what it meant to run away. The girl continued to talk about her childhood and said that her mother married her father just for the sake of money, and gave birth to Yen herself in order to get more property. After the divorce, the girl's mother was able to take a large amount of money, a house, a car as alimony. But she sent the girl to an orphanage when she was three years old to marry another man. The guy wanted to somehow support his neighbor, but he didn't know how, he thought to himself that the girl was even more unhappy than he was, because he had mentors and teachers. The girl asked the guy not to feel sorry for her, she was able to build this house and her bar, step by step over the years. She also said with regret that she does not rely on anyone and lives very well. She said that she herself was independent and very strong, after which she fell head first on the table. Before falling asleep, she tried to say what she was afraid of, but she didn't have time and fell asleep. The guy immediately realized that although the toxicity in her body had subsided, it still caused a huge feeling of fatigue due to lost blood. The guy carefully and gently took the girl in his arms, and then tried to lift her from the table. Having lifted the girl, he stood and looked at her sleeping face and promised himself that while he was here, he would not let anyone hurt her. The girl's cheeks suddenly turned red, which surprised the guy, he seemed to know what this meant. Afterwards, steam came out of her mouth and the guy began to guess even more about this condition. He listened to Yan's breathing and concluded that she had a self-healing ability far beyond that of an ordinary person, this was Ruyan's physiology. He carried the girl to her room and carefully, trying not to wake her, laid her on the bed. He remembered the words of the great master about Ruyin's daughter and that this is a very rare phenomenon in the world and she has restored her original essence and improved her body, and in practice is an excellent couple. The master's words could not leave the guy's mind, he remembered that if you practice double cultivation with others, taking yin and complimenting yang, then your skills will improve and you will get double results. But the third master said that fellow practitioners are one of the most boring things in the world, women only affect the speed of drawing a sword. The guy himself didn't think it was boring, because when he hugged Yen, his heartbeat accelerated due to the influence of Ruyin's physiology or. The guy tried to knock these thoughts out of his head, remembering that he needed to found a sect of masters and promote the teachings. He headed towards the exit and decided that in order to find the seventh elder sister, the most important thing was to take the first step. The door slammed and the guy left Yan's room, who continued to lie in bed with her eyes closed. Then the girl's eyes suddenly opened after the guy left and she even began to smile. With a smile on her face, she correctly noted that the neighbor carried her into the room and did nothing with her. She imagined his silhouette in her head and said that this was the first time she had met such a boy, who was different from the men in the bar who were ready to eat her. Yen tried to figure out what was going on with her and why this chance meeting made her think about the guy all the time. The girl warned herself, saying that she did not deserve such a pure boy, the voice in her head repeated this again. Already in the morning of the next day in Yan's house, one could hear the girl waking up the guy, carefully asking him if he wanted to get up and have breakfast. The guy got out of bed and, rubbing his eyes, asked to have breakfast, not understanding why he was called. 
The girl explained that she ate his noodles yesterday, so she had to thank him with breakfast today, and she also added that she had a surprise for the guy. The guy asked with interest about the surprise from the girl. There was breakfast on the table, which looked very appetizing. It was clear that Yen had put a lot of effort into it. The guy also liked the look of the food and said the presentation was good and complimented the hostess. Yen offered to taste it, assuring him that he would be satisfied. The guy started eating breakfast and said without obvious enthusiasm that he didn't feel anything unusual. The girl laughed and revealed the truth to the guy, saying that she didn't know how to cook breakfast and bought it all downstairs. The guy appreciated the girl's humor and thought that if she was in a humorous mood, then she had almost recovered, which means Ruyin's physiology was worthy of its reputation. Chu Ming remembered that the girl was preparing a surprise for him and decided to find out more about it from her. The girl approached the guy's face and explained to him that she knew that he was not an ordinary person. She, reaching out even closer, assured that he would later make a name for himself in the city, but while he is unknown, she wants to offer him something. She invited the guy to be friends and, in order to show her sincerity, she was ready to relieve him of six months' rent. The guy's eyes lit up, his intentions were not as sincere as the girl's, he immediately thought about renting. He calculated the rent for six months and came to the figure of 1,800 yuan, he knew that he had never even held such money in his hands. The guy sat and thought whether he should be surprised at such generosity on the part of the hostess. The pleasant conversation at breakfast was interrupted by knocks on the door and shouts from Hao, who called Yen names and demanded that he and his boyfriend come out to him. Chu Ming was angry that their leisure time was interrupted, so he stood up and recognized Hao's voice, he asked the girl to leave this problem to him. Yen didn't understand the purpose of the bully's visit, because they took care of everything yesterday, what else does Hao need? The guy explained that yesterday he handed him the medicine when they shook hands and he is now impotent, and if he does not intervene, then Hao will still bother the girl until he gets her body. The girl asked her neighbor, is he the one who drugged Hao? He answered the question in the affirmative, justifying it by saying that they had done terrible things to Yen. Yen thought that an unfamiliar guy stood up for her and even took revenge on the offender. Chu Ming opened the door, where Hao and his henchmen stood on the threshold, he could not immediately assess the situation. Against the background of his three muzzles, Hao began to boldly ask the guy what he had done to him, calling him a nasty boy. Chu Ming tried to play around and pretended that he didn't understand what he was talking about, looking in the other direction altogether. Hao was not in the mood for the guy's jokes and irony, so he grabbed him by the collar of his t-shirt. Hao showed the tone of his intentions and brought the guy a little closer to him and asked him not to be a fool, he does not experience an erection and Ming did this. Chu Ming skillfully lied and, throwing off the guy's hand, asked about the evidence of all this, perhaps he himself was messing around somewhere, just to accuse him. The guy pointed out to Hao that it was also not legal to accuse someone, and otherwise, if he asked him to pay money, the boy would sue him for blackmail. The angry Hao could not find the words to answer the intelligent guy and silently looked for ways to find evidence. One of the henchmen from behind suggested that his boss should not pay attention to the guy's words, but beat him first and speak after that. Hao liked the idea of one of his men and said that they would beat Ming until he confessed. The crowd of men began shouting the words forward, come on, and quickly, waiting to see who would throw the first punch in the fight. Min stood and tried to assess the situation in which he found himself and how he could emerge victorious. He put his feet in a stance and remembered one of his masters, the holy warrior Cho Yuepiao. He remembered everything he had been taught and prepared to put it into practice to fight off the crowd of bandits. Women's screams could be heard from the apartment, Yen asked the guys to stop and threatened the police. The girl stood at full height with the phone in her hands, which she turned with the screen towards the door so that everyone could see that she had already dialed the number. The guys stopped, they had such a pause, as if they froze and were waiting for some action from each other. Ming was upset about this, he wanted to test his skills, and his neighbor called the police. The girl intervened in the conversation, covering her new friend with her body and rightly stated that Hao was the first to drug her, that's why they are in agreement and if he leaves, then she will leave the past in the past. Hao looked at the girl with a grin and asked her if she seriously thought that after opening the bar she had become a serious person. The guy swung his hand towards the girl to hit her in the face with his palm. The girl was surprised by such actions, there was fear and pain on her face, 
and Hao added that Qin Yen will forever remain an ordinary whore. The bully's blow never reached the target, Ming stood between Yen and Hao, who parried the swing. A moment later, the boy's hand was already in front of the bandit's face. Min grabbed the face of his neighbor's offender and began to squeeze it, waiting for something. He immediately managed to throw the bully high into the air and send him a couple of meters back. The man flew over all his subordinates, who raised their heads and watched this. He landed right behind all his henchmen, where he fell with a very loud and characteristic sound. Hao's guys were outraged by this behavior, they called Ming brave if he dared to touch Hao, much less hit him. Ming himself continued to evaluate the situation in order to make the right decision and emerge victorious. The guy put his legs in a stance, preparing to hit someone. He kicked the first scumbag in the side, it was very impressive because the guy did it in flight. He punched the second one in the stomach and also threw him far away from him. He knocked out the third hooligan with a strong blow to the face, from which he lost consciousness for a short time. Yen was concerned that her neighbor had summed up all the scumbags and added that Hao was a local snake and if you contact him, something might happen, but she was not allowed to finish her thought. Yen interrupted Ming, who said that he did not care whether Hao was a dragon or a snake. Continuing his thought, he added that he would teach a lesson to anyone who offended his friend. Hao came to his senses a little and saw Ming approaching him, he tried to threaten him that if his father found out about this, both Yen and the guy himself would die so it was better for him not to approach. The guy's words didn't stop Ming and he kicked Hao in the gut. Min mockingly held his leg on the guy's chest and asked him if he was ashamed at that age to hide behind his daddy. Min thought that beating the guy wouldn't be enough and he should do something special for him, so he took out the needles. He threw them towards the prone opponent and shouted that the smile point is a pain point. The defeated Hao was immediately hit by needles thrown by Ming. The guy began to smile, laugh and writhe in pain at the same time, he screamed how much it hurt him and tried to hold back his laughter. Ming stood watching the funny sight and thought that the great master's acupuncture techniques sometimes brought more relief than the sixth kung fu. The satisfied guy heard the girl scream behind him and immediately realized that Qin Yen was in danger. The bald scumbag held the girl at gunpoint and asked him to correct his brother's condition, otherwise he would shoot Yen right in the head. He ordered again, asking Ming if he was afraid that he would shoot and kill his girlfriend. Ming stood and thought for a while, in the end he decided that the gun was loaded. He pulled the needles out of the lying bandit, and then put them back to himself. Baldi asked his boss if he was okay, and then saw that he felt better. He stood up and thought that Ming's methods were not simple and he couldn't be taken just like that, and he also assured his accomplice out loud that everything was fine with him. Hao asked his opponent what he had done to him, he described his feelings as feeling a strange pain, as if thousands of ants were crawling on him, but at the same time he could only laugh loudly. Ming once again showed how the needle and assured him that he had not done anything unusual, simple traditional acupuncture. Hao was impressed by the guy's talents and said that he had never seen such people, after which he offered to join him. Min did not understand such a sudden change in mood and thought to himself that the guy was out of his mind if he had just beaten him half to death and was now recruiting him. Hao began to talk more about himself, saying that his father runs a fishing business on this street, he also added that his family has great influence and if he joins, he will always have money and women. The guy rightly noted that Hao had offended his girlfriend and how he was going to pay for it, the guy understood to himself, Yen called him her boyfriend, which means he can't let her down. Hao spoke arrogantly about Yen and said that if he likes such girls, then she is nothing of herself. Hao took Ming by the shoulder and assured him that he had so many girls under his command, and as long as he communicated with him, he could choose any one, both romantic and pure, his eyes would be dizzy from the choice. Ming was not interested in the proposal and he threw off Hao's hand and asked him not to appear in front of them again and to take his people away. Hao made an analogy with drinking and told the guy that he would have to drink a free drink if he couldn't drink the one he was offered. The bald big man ordered Yen to follow him and not resist at gunpoint. Hao turned his back on Ming and told him that since he didn't agree, it would be bad. Taking the girl away, he said that Min would have to watch her suffer if he didn't want to join. Ming's face was very calm, as if he was not worried about the impending danger for Yen. The guy entered the room and thought to himself that these people are still normal and understand that no matter how they act, if other people see them, it is not good. The bald big man continued to hold the girl at gunpoint. 
The guy calmly replied that everything was fine and he wasn't worried about anything. After that, he pulled the handle of the front door and said to himself that someone would get hurt today. Hao chose two lucky ones and asked them to settle matters with Qin Yen in front of this child. One guy took off his t-shirt, and the second began to unzip his fly right in front of the girl's face. Hao warned the guy that if he took even one step, Yen would die, he also added that he wanted Ming to see everything with his own eyes. Hao didn't see fear in Ming's eyes, so she asked him why he wasn't afraid and even laughed, not understanding his confidence. Min asked what he was afraid of, after which he stated that people in an open field are no faster than a bullet, but at such a distance. The guy rushed between the hooligans with lightning speed, throwing them a little to the side. The big guy with the gun looked at this and didn't even have time to squeeze the girl tighter to intimidate the guy. The bald man had already begun to understand a little what was happening, so he was preparing to pull the trigger. But he didn't take into account the speed of the guy who snatched the gun from his hand. The pistol had already shot at the ceiling when Min took it away from the girl's face. After that, Min hit the guy on the hand, to which he felt very severe pain in his hand. After that, Ming immediately hit the offender Yen in the stomach, knocking him to the floor. The big guy took very heavy damage to himself. With a roar and screams, the bald guy fell to the floor and screamed in pain. Yen warned the guy that the hooligans were already swinging behind him, but he asked her to sit and wait a little. The guy stood with his back to his opponents and so far did not even try to dodge. He began to turn around and told the bandits that they were too slow, even wild boars in the mountains are faster. He stopped the knife that was pointed in his direction and threw it away. Then he grabbed the bandits by the wrists and began to twist them. He asked them to close their mouths, grabbed them by the throat and threw them towards Hao. Hao stood fearfully in front of his defeated subordinates and admired the skills of his enemy, not understanding when the limit would come, this was something more than simple military training. Realizing that it was time to run away, Hao hastily began to retreat, thinking that it was impossible to fight such a monster and he must return with his father, who would clearly find a way to defeat the guy. Hao pulled the door handle in an attempt to open it, but he couldn't. Surprised and frightened, Hao began to ask why he couldn't open the door. Min replied, taking the keys out of his pocket, that he closed the door as soon as the bandits entered the house. The frightened Hao could not believe it, and Ming joked in his head that thank God this door was old with a key, and not with an imprint, because he would not have understood how to use it. Ming stood in front of Hao and asked him why he was silent now, if a couple of minutes ago he was a cool guy. Hao fell to his knees and bowed to Ming, telling him that he apologizes and will do whatever he wants, he has money at home and he will compensate his girlfriend for everything. He screamed that he was wrong, expecting mercy from Chu Ming. The guy thought that this was a great opportunity to end it all and make sure that Qin Yen would no longer be bothered by these scoundrels, he would do it once and for all. Then the guy's thoughts were interrupted by a knock on the door, from which people asked, is Mr. Chu at home? The guy walked towards the door, but was surprised that someone knew his name, he should be unknown to anyone in Jiangzhou, maybe it was the seventh sister? He opened the door and asked who it was. There were people in tuxedos standing outside the door and one of them asked the guy if his name was Chu Ming. The guy confirmed his name and thought to himself, wondering who might disturb him and if this group of people in the suit were Hao's men. The man took off his glove to shake the guy's hand. He introduced himself as Yu Chuan Ming and thanked the guy for saving his father on the train. But Min asked which father we were talking about. The guy with tears in his eyes looked towards Min, who had probably forgotten the story from the train. Hearing the outrageous sounds from the prone Hao, Chuan Ming assured him that he was not talking to him now. Hao didn't understand what kind of child this was, if second young master Yu could come and find him in person, he remembered that the Yu family was one of the three influential families of Jiangzhou and was essentially one of the emperors of the city. The man asked if it was convenient for Min to talk now. After that, he asked if he needed help to resolve some unpleasant issues. Behind him stood a crowd of subordinates who were preparing to carry out the orders of their boss. Hao was worried that even if members of the Yu family killed him now, his father would not dare to interfere, and if he was involved, then his family would simply be destroyed. Ming remembered the Yu family and asked the guy that they were the children of that grandfather from the train whom he helped. Ming extended his hand in response to Chuan Ming and asked about the old man's condition and whether he was taking medicine. There was a handshake between an influential member of the Yu family and Ming. 
The man answered the guy's question, assuring that Chu's methods were outstanding and his father was now much better, even doctors in key hospitals exclaimed this miracle. Hao again tried to understand what was happening and realized that this child even saved Mr. Yu. The guards decided to remind the second young master of something. He explained that this was a small thank you to the guy and a tribute from the family to Mr. Chu for his righteousness, there were suitcases with money and a gold bar. Ming was delighted by this and froze for a couple of minutes in front of such wealth, he had never seen such money in person. Yen thought about her neighbor and decided that he must be some kind of big shot if the Yu family itself gives him such a tribute. She also remembered that this morning, with great fanfare, she announced that she was waiving the rent of 1,800 yuan, she thought that the guy was surprised and showed admiration to make her happy. The girl was confused, she tried to answer the question, why does the guy want to make her happy? Naive Yen immediately thought that the guy was interested in her or that he liked her. The guy stood in front of the wealth and thought that if he took it all to the mountains, the old people's eyes would pop out. Immediately, the guy's head remembered the teachings from his mentor, the military genius Cho Yuepiao, who said that at the foot of the mountain there are two things that are better not to touch, namely easy money and women. The guy then objected to the master and said that these are two things that men want and added that if he had 200 yuan, he would buy a new Taoist robe for the sixth master. The master hit the guy on the head and said that his words were nonsense and that he should not doubt his teachings. Ming called the master too serious and grabbed his head in pain. The master thought that he had hit his student too hard. The master decided to smooth things out a little and took the guy by the shoulders, after which he added that he wished him all the best, he just shouldn't touch what he shouldn't touch, because it could harm him. Already in real time, Ming folded his hands in gratitude. He assured the guest that the doctors were kind-hearted and it was his own choice to save his grandfather, so he could not accept these gifts. Chuan Ming was surprised by this and thought to himself that Lin Lin had guessed everything, that the guy would not accept gifts. In his memories, the man remembered how Lin Lin assured that the guy would not accept expensive gifts. She tried to explain her version by saying that if he had evil intentions towards their family, he would not have left quietly and alone. But the uncle was sure that this was all because the guy was still not well acquainted with the personalities of the family. Chuanming explained to his niece that since he knew where the benefactor lived, he could not afford to lose politeness, but Lin Lin still tried to stop him. The girl stood behind her uncle and he asked if she had any other business with him. She said that if the guy really does not accept the gifts, then she wants to give him one thing and have his uncle say that it is from her. Chuanming noticed the guy's righteousness and stated that he would not force him to accept gifts from the family. Security immediately closed the suitcases with their contents and put them away. Hao was perplexed that Ming rejected the gifts, there was a seven-figure sum in the suitcases, and no one with the money could afford to buy a new gold phone. After the guys put away the gifts, Chuanming patted his hands, beckoning one of his subordinates. He ordered something to be brought to him and the guard brought a small box with a gift from Lin Lin. Ming warned Mr. Yu that if this was another gift they wanted to give, then he didn't need it. The man, holding out the box, said that Lin Lin asked him to give this to the guy. Ming immediately remembered Lin Lin's appearance and was surprised that that beauty wanted to convey something to him. Disappointed Yen heard the woman's name and became a little jealous of her neighbor. The guy examined the box and assured himself that it did not look like a valuable item, so it would not be a violation of the teachings of the sixth master. Ming said that he would look now and if it was something expensive, he would still refuse the gift, to which he received an affirmative answer from Chuan Ming. He opened the box and was pleasantly surprised by what he saw. Hao tried to figure out what could be in the box if it impressed Ming more than all the money that was offered to him. He took out a coupon for a free lunch that would be valid three times and was delighted that he could eat three times for free. He also felt something else in the box and decided to unpack it completely. There was a mobile phone there, but an ordinary one and not gold, and with it a note. The girl wrote that this is her old phone and WeChat is installed there, and the phone card inside does not need to be rented every month, and if the guy doesn't need it, he can recycle it. Chuan Ming was surprised that Lin Lin was giving him a phone, because a couple of minutes ago he refused the gold one, because he could take a simple and old one, he did not understand. The guy put the mobile phone in his pocket and assured the guest that he would take it. The man was surprised, but could not do anything about it. The guy also asked to tell the girl that he really liked her gifts. Chuanming assured that he would pass it on, 
but deep in his soul he still didn't understand what Lord Chu was thinking about, but he can say for sure that the guy values friendship more than material things and it's worth being friends with him. Chuan Ming looked at the beaten Hao and thought that he had an idea of how to thank the savior of his father. Looking at Hao, he asked Ming if he could help him take out the trash before leaving. Ming turned around and looked at Hao with his accomplices who were lying in the room and assuming that by the word garbage Chuan Ming meant them. Hao was seriously scared and thought that if he didn't cope with this now, he would be doomed. He was almost crying and understood that his fate now depended on Chu Ming's words. He tried to find the strength to say something to Ming. Hao began to bow to Ming and, calling him Mr. Chu, asked for mercy, saying that he had eighty old mothers, seven or eight children and five wives who depend on him and if he dies, then they will be finished. Surprised, Chuan Ming and Chu Ming watched and listened to Hao's lies, while the boy himself tried to decide what to do with Hao. Ming asked his guests not to worry and forget about Hao, assuring that he himself and his henchmen would cope. Chuan Ming did not insist on his opinion for a long time and said that then he would leave now, they said goodbye and Chuan Ming headed towards the exit. Walking away from the door, Chuan Ming appreciated the guy's skill, calling him a talent, he truly admired the guy's righteousness. The influential man also suggested that his medical skills exceeded all expectations, the weapon that lies on the ground had already been used. While Chuan Ming was putting on his gloves, he also thought that he could not subdue so many people without a single scratch, this is a very powerful effect. Chuan Ming also thought that if he couldn't get this guy, and he went into the hands of his brother, then his plans might be in jeopardy. After Chuan Ming left, the bandits all began to bow to Ming and Hao promised that he would repay him for his kindness and would work for this, like an ox or a horse. Yen sat and admired Ming, she watched how the arrogant Hao was now bowing to the boy and asking for forgiveness, for her it was incredible. Ming asked the bandits if Mr. Yu was really so merciless and intimidating, because in conversation with him he was polite and very nice. Hao explained to Ming that what he saw was just a shell of Chuan Ming, and in fact he even had his own nickname in the city's criminal world. According to Hao, the name Elegant Devil has stuck to him and he is quite famous in criminal circles. Hao continued to talk about the man and said that all the dirty work behind the scenes of the Yu family is done by the second young master, if Ming does not let Hao go today, he will die. Ming thought that everything was so cool, after which he dismissed thoughts of revenge, realizing that Hao was now convinced, which means he could use it if he had something to do. Ming asked Hao if he saved him, would it be difficult for him to do a small favor? Hao asked in surprise about one favor, he could provide 200, for being spared in front of the Yu family. Ming asked the guys not to make trouble at Qin Yan's bar and even guard him from other hooligans. Hao assured the guy that no one dares come to the girl's bar and cause trouble while he is alive. And secondly, the guy asked his new subordinate Hao to collect information about famous girls in Jiangzhou. Hao asked himself about this, not understanding why he needed information about girls. Hao thought that Ming was just playing on his nerves in front of his girlfriend, and he also realized for himself that Qin Yen was not as promiscuous as her friend Zhang Qian, so he was very mistaken about her. Ming also explained that the age of girls should be limited to 21 to 27 years old and they should have outstanding appearance. The hooligans got up from their knees and assured Mr. Chu that they would find all the information for him. He waved the guys off and told them they could go. The guys were already standing in the doorway and assured the guy that they would do everything for the guy right now. The door slammed shut and Ming's new subordinates left Qin Yan's residence. Hao fell in front of the door on the other side and exhaled with relief, afterward he thought that he just wanted to have fun with two girls, but he almost lost his life. The big bald man asked Hao if they would really listen to this boy. Hao looked indignantly towards his accomplice, he clearly wanted to explain something to him. Hao slapped him in the face and rightly noted that even the second master of the Yu family respects this boy. He explained to his guys that in the future, Mr. Chu will become a huge boss, which means they should look for opportunities to cooperate with him, and then they will rise very high. Hao continued to look into the future and said that with such power he would be able to take over the entire fishing business within the second ring. Meanwhile, after all the tense events, normal life seemed to have returned to Yan's apartment. Ming swept up all the dirt that the guests brought into his and Yan's house. The guy was cleaning up and whistling a little and Yen sat worriedly thinking about something. The girl heard the conversation between Hao and Ming, so she noticed that the guy was looking for young girls, 
and she was already 26, which means he couldn't fall in love with such an old woman. Joyful Min thought with happiness that he would finally be helped to find his seventh elder sister. The guy was thinking about all the information about her that he knew, he was 20 himself, and the great master said that his sister was several years older, which means finding a girl under 25 should not be a problem. The guy realized that he was a real genius and decided that he would succeed. Yen looked with a loving gaze towards Ming and thought that it would be very difficult for a second such person, he is not only experienced in medicine, but also knows important people, after one word how immediately obeyed. The girl decided to dream a little and wanted him to become her boyfriend, this would be real happiness for her. She also assured herself that she would no longer have to worry about her future life. For herself, the girl decided that she no longer wanted to be a victim of the oppression of others. The story moves to the evening of the same day. The light was still on in Yan's apartment, which meant that no one had fallen asleep there yet. Min came out of the bathroom wearing only a towel and told his neighbor that he had finished washing. Yen looked towards the guy and said that she would come over now. The guy picked up the phone and thought to himself whether Hao and the guys were able to find at least some information on his request today. Then a message from Zhu Hao came to his phone and Ming noticed that this smartphone was a really convenient thing. The guy was distracted by sounds from the bathroom door where Qin Yen went. It was the sound of water, which could only mean that Yen had started taking a shower. Suddenly the guy caught himself thinking that this was the first time he and a girl were under the same roof, especially with the girl taking a bath next door. Ming assured himself that the doctor had a good heart, he repeated this two more times and said that in a hundred years they would all be just a handful of forest. Ten minutes later, Yan's voice came from the bathroom, calling Chu Ming. Ming realized that at this moment there should be no one in the house except him and Qin Yan, moreover, she should be taking a shower now. Yen continued to call the guy and asked him to open the door. In the guy's head there was a silhouette of the hostess as she took a bath. He thought something was wrong and he even liked what he imagined. The guy tried to convince himself that the girl just needed something and she wouldn't just walk into his room naked. He didn't think about his decision for long and finally opened the door for the girl and asked her what happened. Yen stood in front of him after a shower, she was wearing only a towel with which she covered her body, and in her hand was a bottle of wine. Min stood and looked at this with a surprised face, he had never seen a girl so close. Yen entered the guy's room, her hands were busy with a towel and a bottle of wine, she asked her neighbor if he thought she was too old. Confused, Min assured the girl that she was very young and incredibly beautiful, not understanding why she was asking this, and he also advised her not to drink because she had recently undergone surgery. The beauty thought that Min was lying so she asked him why he needed information about girls under 25, and she was already 26. The guy at that time was standing right in front of the jealous girl, thinking about what to answer her. Min did not expect such a direct question and therefore decided to tell the girl that there were other reasons for this and they had nothing to do with what she was thinking about. The girl repeated the guy's words about other reasons, and then closed her eyes. He couldn't finish his thought and her legs gave way a little. After the operation she still couldn't walk confidently. A bottle of wine fell and spilled its entire contents directly onto the floor in the guy's room. The girl was caught by the guy's hand, who asked her to be careful and not make sudden movements. The couple crossed paths with loving glances, and Ming immediately drew attention to the girl's beautiful face. They stood together, Min held the girl so that she would not fall, and they looked like a real couple in love, against the backdrop of a fallen bottle of wine. The girl asked the guy if he seriously thought she was beautiful, her voice was trembling and it was clear that she took these words very close to her heart. The guy replied that he really thought Yen was very beautiful, and he also apologized for the words that Hao said about girls under 25 if they offended Yen. There was a mentor's voice in the guy's head, who insisted that the doctors were friendly and he asked himself to calm down, but also noticed that the girl smelled very good. The girl took her towel and asked the guy, if he really thinks so, then he should let her do something and took a short pause. The girl in front of the already embarrassed guy threw off her towel and showed her body in all its glory and then finished her thought and told the guy to let her be a woman. The guy was shocked by what he saw, for the first time in his life he sees the naked body of a girl, especially so close and as if he could take advantage of it. The guy thought that he needed to catch the towel and put it on the girl again, he tried to grab onto it. But his hand was caught by Yen herself, who consciously opened herself up to the guy and wanted him to take the initiative too. 
she assured that even if the towel falls, he does it voluntarily and directed the guy's hand closer to her body. Min said that if this continues, he might do something to the girl that will hurt her. Yen, closing her eyes, told the guy that this was her decision, hinting that she was not against intimacy. Ming was already reaching out with his hand towards the naked body of the beautiful hostess, while Yen herself was thinking about how a young guy with violent blood could restrain himself from doing this. Ming stopped a little and remembered the master's words that having made a choice, you must bear responsibility to the end. The guy's childhood memories came into his head, where he was walking in the mountains with his master and saw a dying boar. The master asked the child if he wanted to save the boar, hinting that he would have to do it himself. The boy really wanted to help, but was afraid that his skills would not be enough to save the animal. The mentor provocatively asked if the guy just wanted to leave her. Min assured the master that he was taught to be a good doctor, which means he must help save the life of the poor boar. The master assured the guy that when a choice is made, he must act and the boy proceeded to provide help for the animal. Trying to do his job, the guy noticed that blood was flowing in a stream from his hands into the clearing, which meant that he had screwed up. The upset boy, in a trembling voice, told the master that it had not worked out for him, the wild boar died while he was performing the operation. The child immediately began to cry and regret the loss of life, but the master stood calmly and coldly assured him that it was his choice. The guy in tears said that he felt guilty, because she could have lived a little longer if he had not performed the operation. The master sat down next to the boy and tried to calm him down, but also added that having made a choice, he must bear responsibility to the end. The mentor continued to teach the guy and told him that in the future he would have much more than a guilty and useless choice, this is the path of a doctor. The guy's head again contained the words that having made a choice, you must bear responsibility to the end. The guy's hand stopped on the way to the girl's gorgeous body and he decided for himself that taking advantage of such a helpless woman was not the choice he needed. He also realized that the reason for the girl's behavior was that she had seen how outstanding people treated him. He picked up the towel and took it in his hand, after which he realized that he should not use the girl. The girl didn't look at the guy, her eyes were closed, but she asked herself why he still hadn't touched her. Unexpectedly for Yen herself, the guy wrapped the girl's body in a towel again, to which he received surprise from his neighbor. The guy asked the girl to respect herself, if possible, he also added that they were friends and he would always help her. In addition, Yen gave him free rent, for which he is also grateful. The girl stood in front of the guy and tried to find words and emotions, she looked very awkward. Tears welled up in her eyes and she began to naturally cry. The crying girl was touched by this act from the guy and rushed into his arms. The whole house could hear the enthusiastic screams of the girl, who was glad to have such a neighbor and friend. She lay tear-stained on the bed in her room and had already fallen asleep. Min, standing over the sleeping girl, said that after everything they had gone through, they would definitely become true friends. Ming, admiring the girl, was interrupted by a call on his new phone and he looked there with interest, not understanding who might need it so late. He saw that it was Lin Lin's number, the guy was trying to understand what the girl needed from him at such a late hour. Chu Ming walked out of his roommate's room and answered the phone, then greeted Lin Lin. Lin Lin asked the guy how he was doing, if he liked the old phone, to which he replied that everything was fine with him and the smartphone would clearly be better than his old one. The girl asked the guy why he had not yet accepted her friend request, she explained that she had created an account for him on WeChat and he would be able to use it as soon as he opened it. The guy did not fully understand all the girl's words and assured her that he had not yet figured out how to use the phone. Lin Lin laughed a little and advised the guy to quickly master the new gadget, later she invited him to have lunch with her tomorrow. The guy remembered that he received a free coupon from the girl, which she sent, and agreed to go together. Lin Lin promised to pick up the guy tomorrow, but she will decide for herself about the food. The guy agreed with the girl's words and said that they would see each other tomorrow. The girl was haunted by the thought of why her grandfather sent her second uncle to give her a phone, he knows that Chuan Ming is different from her father. She thought that perhaps, when her grandfather's health began to improve, he would again want to return to the position of head of the family. The girl remembered that the old man was not that old, he was only 60 years old, he was simply burdened by a genetic disease, and he also decided that being in such a large family was very troublesome. In the Yen house, Ming was still awake, having received information from Hao at his request. 
He looked at a photo of one of the girls and noticed her specific legs, which she could kick to death. Ming appreciated Hao's work and said that he was very reliable in his affairs if he could find a lot of information so quickly, but the guy himself still could not understand who exactly the seventh elder sister was. The guy also wondered why Lin Lin invited him to dinner after her uncle gave her gifts. He remembered the girl and realized that with her intelligence it was impossible not to have goals. This means that Lin Lin wants something from the guy, but it's not clear what exactly. For himself, Min realized that as soon as he came down from the mountains, his life became very troublesome. The guy continued to look through the photos of the girls that Hao sent and noticed that it was very difficult to create a sect under this mountain. Scrolling through the next girl, the guy seems to have noticed something. He jumped up as if scalded by boiling water and did not take his eyes off the phone screen. It was a wealthy girl who was standing next to an expensive car. He saw a sign on the bracelet that he recognized as the seventh symbol. The guy was glad that he had found the seventh sister and said it out loud with relief. But he was upset that only half of the face was visible in the photo and he would not be able to quickly find the girl, especially since he was not familiar with the city and would not be able to understand where the place in the photo was. He decided that he should call Hao and ask where he found this girl. Hao was sitting in some restaurant and gambling, after which he was distracted by a call from Chu Ming. Ming explained that he needed a girl with a photo and Hao asked to send him a photo with the girl of interest. One of the girls at the table asked Hao what he was doing and asked him to walk around, because it was his turn. Ming listened through the phone as Hao asked the guests not to make noise and wait a little. Hao recognized the photo and told Mr. Chu that he didn't know where it was taken, but his younger brother found the photo on the internet, and if necessary, he would call him and clarify. Would the impudent Ming asked his interlocutor why he was really so careless with him? Hao denied the guy's words and assured Ming that the photo was taken in Jiangzhou and he was ready to put his life on the line, which treated Mr. Chu with respect. The girl who was sitting opposite noticed how worried Hao was and said that he was rarely seen like this. Ming thought it was safe to say that the seventh sister was in Jiangzhou. He threw the phone aside and shouted indignantly, where should he look for her? He fell exhausted on the bed and said that he came to the city only to find his seventh older sister. The guy remembered that Lin Lin invited him to dinner and she certainly should know where this place is. Moreover, given her intelligence, she could know the seventh sister personally, the guy thought to himself. It's early morning in the city and the action continues in Yan's apartment. The sleepy housewife opened her eyes and smelled some delicious smell coming from their kitchen. The girl put slippers on her slender feet and went to look for the source of the delicious smell. The girl came to the kitchen, where she found Ming at the stove, she asked what smelled so delicious and the guy answered her that he was preparing porridge and inviting Yen to try it. There was actually porridge in the pan that the guy had cooked and it looked very appetizing. The couple sat down at the table and the girl took a plate of food, after which she praised the guy and said that the one who marries him would be very lucky. The guy explained to the girl that cooking is actually very simple, you need to keep the temperature under control and not add everything, and then the food will turn out very tasty. Then the couple was distracted by a car horn and the girl said that someone was honking loudly, so she would go and check. It was Lin Lin Yen who immediately drew attention and said that a luxurious car had driven up to them and a very fashionable girl was getting out of the car. Ming immediately realized that we were talking about Lin Lin, so he decided to remember that she promised to pick him up today. The guy went out onto Yan's balcony and also asked to look to make sure it was Lin Lin. The girl recognized the guy and, looking up at the balcony, shouted his name and said that she had come to pick him up. The guy spat out what he didn't have time to finish and realized that it was really his friend from the train. He hurriedly left the kitchen and asked Yen to put the bowl in the sink and assured her that he would wash it when he returned. Yen was overcome by a feeling of jealousy, she was offended that the guy left her and ran to the young girl. Looking at the porridge prepared by her neighbor, Yen thought that maybe they really were from different worlds. Lin Lin was driving an expensive convertible and told the guy that she wanted to give him a tour before dinner. The girl winked at the guy and explained that Jiangzhou is the first great city of the southwestern region in China. Ming and Lin Lin were already in the city, where the guy was afraid of high speed and asked the girl not to go so fast. The guy continued to complain about the speed of the car, and the girl smiled as her hair blew in the wind. She noticed that the guy lived far from the center, even outside the fourth ring, Lin Lin asked why he settled so far away. Min explained that the craftsman had found this house for him and even though it was far away, 
he felt quite comfortable there, the guy thought to himself that this was his first time driving such a car and it seemed to him that there was poor sound insulation and he wouldn't be able to listen to music. The girl replied that his area was still very far away, so she offered to live with her, rent, electricity and water were free and she was not particularly busy right now and would be able to show him the city at any time. The guy refused and said that everything suited him, he thought that he had come here not to walk around the city, but to find the seventh elder sister and open a sect, especially if he did not pay, he would become a guest. And Ming himself doesn't like feeling like a guest, and Lin Lin is quite smart and knows about his medical skills, so she definitely has requests for his services. The girl was not upset and told the guy that if he wants to have fun today, then let him indulge himself, and she will cover all expenses. After a short conversation, the girl pressed her foot even harder on the gas pedal. The car immediately jerked even faster and picked up high speed, which frightened Mina very much. The girl parked her sports car near some building, this was all new to Mina. There was a parking attendant standing in front of the car, who was slightly blown away by the wind from the sudden braking. The girl stuck her heels out of the driver's door and headed towards the valet. The beauty threw the keys into the guy's hands and asked him to park her car, and she would pick up the keys at the reception. Confused, Ming could not understand how the door opened, he could not remember that the masters had taught him such a thing. The girl saw how the guy was suffering and pressed the button on the dashboard. The door opened and Lin Lin noticed the disadvantage of this car, that the doors are not so easy to open and Ming is not the first person to get confused with this. The embarrassed guy got out of the car, thanked his girlfriend and added that he was about to jump out of the car. The girl took the guy by the hand and told him to follow her to change clothes first, the guy looked at her with interest. She hurried the onlooker and ran, holding his hand in hers, towards the shopping center. Inside, Lin Lin explained to the guy that this is the best shopping town in Jiangzhou, there are many areas and you can find a lot of luxury, then she asked the guy what brand he likes the most. The guy still didn't understand what his rich friend meant, so her words meant nothing to him. The guy scratched the back of his head and awkwardly said that he liked his clothes that he was wearing now and they looked good. The girl looked at the guy and told him that he didn't have a clear idea of his own appearance. Lin Lin took his hand again, trying to lead him along. Today he asked to choose clothes for the guy on his own, after which he abruptly went somewhere, holding Ming's hand. Min himself was shocked that a girl would now dress him and was not particularly eager to go somewhere. After shopping a bit, they stopped at one and Lin Lin asked how about this, to which the guy said that the clothes seemed a little old-fashioned to him. The girl assured the guy that this place was youthful and stylish, but he said that it was too fashionable for him and he was more traditional. The girl was thinking about advising the guy that it should not be too fashionable and not too old-fashioned. It was clear from her face that she remembered a similar store and was already preparing to take the guy there. A moment later, Min was already standing in new clothes, shorts, a shirt and sneakers, the guy's image had not changed much, except that it increased his status at first sight. Lin Lin suggested that the guy would like this option, but Min confirmed the girl's words and said that he liked it. The girl consultant began to flatter the guy, saying that these clothes seemed to be created for him and asked if he was satisfied with them after trying them on. The good-natured consultant said to herself that she was annoyed by the guy's poor appearance, he wouldn't be able to afford it, but the girl with him looked very stylish, she was disappointed that they sold men's clothing and not women's. Under a hypocritical smile, the consultant continued to be indignant, realizing that the guy was trying things on for so long, but in the end he would not buy anything, she thought that this was a waste of her time. The guy admired himself a little and finally decided to ask how much it all cost. The consultant said that it included a jacket, trousers and newly released sneakers, the total cost of it was only 7,699 yuan, she also said that there was a 22% discount for members. The consultant continued to judge the guy in her head, saying that he wouldn't be able to afford it anyway, he's poor. The guy calmly and without giving a hint repeated the amount of 7,690 yuan. To himself, the guy was indignant at this number, he and all the craftsmen on the mountain did not have that much expenses per year. Lin Lin told the girl that she would pay for everything, and then asked her to scan the QR code herself or would the consultant do it. The embarrassed consultant asked Lin Lin to go to the cash register, where she would scan everything, but the girl thought to herself that this was the first time she had seen a woman pay for a man, 
which is why she fell in love with him, probably because of his poverty and uncleanliness. A voice from the terminal said that the payment in the amount of 7,699 yuan was successful, and also thanked him for the visit. Lin Lin asked the girl to pack all her things for her, and then began to leave. The couple had already left the store and were walking further through the shopping town, Mina was surprised by the speed of payment, so he asked that they just scanned it and paid immediately. Lin Lin noticed that the guy had not studied WeChat, she asked him to take a closer look at it. The girl asked the guy to look at his balance in the app, she was worried that he didn't have enough money, so she put in a little. The guy hastily took out his phone and started looking for the application, and then the balance tab. Having found the desired section, the guy began to count the very round number that was there, he tried to understand how many zeros there were. He didn't understand the numbers for long and, apparently, it was an indecently large amount. He was pleasantly surprised, there was actually a lot of money there, despite Lin Lin's words. He shouted the number 100,000 to the entire store, he couldn't quite believe it. Min asked his good-natured friend if it was money or just numbers on the phone, the girl assured the incredulous guy that it was real money, saying that she had just bought clothes for him through her phone. The guy handed the phone into Lin Lin's hands and asked her to immediately take the money back, he is a doctor and they are friendly and he himself does not accept unfair wealth. The girl was indignant and said that this was not ill-gotten wealth, but gratitude for the fact that the guy saved her life one day. Lin Lin remembered that the guy at the station asked her to stay away from the people in green, Ming remembered something similar. In the girl's head there were memories of some kind of car accident in which people were injured. Lin Lin told the guy that, on Ming's advice, her friend changed clothes and actually saved her life and helped her avoid a disaster. Memories are carried back to a few days ago, when the girls were driving from the station and a car crashed into them. Chu Ying began to become indignant and scream at the driver who crashed into her, where he bought his license. A man wearing sunglasses, a black suit and a hat got out of the car. He took out a pistol from his holster and pointed it at Chu Ying, who was sitting in the driver's seat. The girl was very scared when she saw the weapon and said to herself that it was a real pistol. The excited Lin Lin tried to find out from her friend who it was and why the gun was pointed at them, but she herself did not know. The guy saw that the girl was wearing black clothes and was a little surprised, after which he hid the weapon. He got back into the car and when he opened the door, he explained that the target was supposed to be wearing green today and he was most likely mistaken. After which the killer hastily left the scene of the traffic accident. Chu Ying exhaled with relief and noted that if she had not had spare clothes, then everything would have ended very badly for her. The frightened girl hugged Lin Lin and thanked her for her friend saving her life. Lin Lin was not as shocked by this as by the fact that Chu Ming was able to predict all this and that incident with the doctor confirmed this more, maybe he can really look into the future, the girl asked herself. Already in real time, in the trading town, Lin Lin explained to the guy that the Yu family mobilized all resources to find the shooter, but they found out nothing. Min asked the girl if she wanted him to help her family and find out information about the killer? The girl answered in the affirmative and said that until they find out the name of who is behind this, Ian will always be in danger and she, as a friend, cannot look at this. The guy decided to help the girl and said that he would now try to find out something, after which he began to snap his fingers. The guy turned to the ghosts and gods, read a prayer and showed them respect, continued speaking in incomprehensible phrases, but seemed to be able to hear the answer. The girl looked at the strange process and thought to herself that this was one of the secret Chinese arts, namely the art of fortune telling. The guy returned from a strange state and told the girl that he understood everything and immediately heard questions in his direction. He explained that this matter had nothing to do with Lin Ling, and violent intervention would bring unpredictable consequences that would be terrible. The confident girl asked if there was a solution and thought in her head that Chu Ying was her best friend and even if it had nothing to do with Lin Lin herself, then she should help. The guy indignantly explained to the girl that he could not help in any way, now his power is limited only to energy analysis. The girl said that she understood everything, but inside herself he continued to think of ways to help her friend, but she had nothing other than a prediction. The girl interrupted her thoughts and grabbed Min's hand, intending to take him somewhere again. She suggested finishing this topic and reminded him that it was almost time, so she offered the guy lunch. The guy thought about Chu Ying, despite the fact that she and Lin Lin are best friends, she has another side that the naive girl doesn't even know about. 
The guy walked hand in hand with Lin Lin and thought that the fate of a city man can be very difficult and the art of fortune telling should not be used lightly. Finally, the couple reached the restaurant where they were supposed to have lunch. At the entrance they were met by waitresses who greeted the couple, and Min asked in surprise whether they would definitely dine here. The guy was horrified and thought that it all looked much more expensive than his clothes, he was afraid to even imagine how much everything cost. The girl asked the guy not to worry, she would cover all expenses, but if he refused, it would be disrespectful to her and she would not be able to consider him her friend. This time, Ming did not need much persuasion and he agreed to the treats and the fact that he would enjoy the joy. Lin Lin was already placing an order for the waitress, who approached them and she asked for one portion of each dish. The waitress noticed that there were only two young people, and they had a lot of dishes in the restaurant and they would not be able to eat them all. The guy objected, saying that he could eat everything in this establishment. He remembered that when he was in the mountains, he was able to eat more than half a wild boar on his own. Lin Lin repeated once again that they order everything, to which she received a positive response from the waitress. Ming was uncomfortable, but he still decided to ask Lin Lin why she is so generous, does she have a rich family? The girl asked Ming what he thought, hinting that she was from a very rich family. The guy said that the master told him about the house of millionaires, so the girl has two of them? The girl laughed at the amount of two million and asked not to make her laugh, but the guy was serious and asked how much money she had? She replied that she couldn't say for sure, but later, moving away from the topic of money, she noted that the guy's medicine really helps and the genetic diseases of the children in the family are alleviated. The girl told the guy that the family agreed to three requests from Min, which they could fulfill. The guy thanked the girl and noticed that everything was not like in the novels, usually guys coming down from the mountain seem to know the identities of influential people, but for some reason he doesn't know and for him it's strange. The girl reminded herself that these three requests were not given for free, looking at the guy with interest. One way or another, over time, Ming will still remember Lin Lin. Some loving couple walked past the table of Ming and Lin Lin. They were lightly dressed and holding each other, they looked very cute. The girl noticed something, as if she recognized the couple at the table. She recognized Lin Ling and tried to recognize her, because she was engaged to her third brother, and was now dining with another man. She said it was a grave insult to her family, and apparently she didn't intend to just let it go. The guy asked his girlfriend what happened and if she was okay. The girl turned out to be the sixth daughter of the Wang family, Wang Ziang, second among the ten largest families in the city, told her lover that someone was neglecting her family, which means she had to sort it out. The angry girl kicked open the door to the hall, after which she announced Lin Lin's courage. Surprised, Ming and Lin Lin turned towards the couple upon hearing the girl's name. The indignant woman began to scold Lin Lin, saying that she was going to marry her older brother and was still flirting with guys, this was outrageous impudence. Lin Lin recognized the girl, it was Wang Ziang, the capricious junior princess, and unfortunately she came here. Lin Lin remembered that the Wang family has control over many key supply industries and it is better not to conflict with them. Unfortunately, the girls here are also Chu Ming, she cannot afford to have her affairs with the Wang family connected with him. Lin Lin said that the young man was just her friend and they had lunch together, and it had nothing to do with the Wang family. Ming realized that the Wang family was not small, because his friend would not tolerate insults and she had to smile back. Ziang began to contradict the girl, saying that her third brother liked her and she was destined to be his woman, how could this have nothing to do with the Wang family, if Lin Lin had dinner with another man, then this casts a shadow on the elder brother. Afterwards, Ziang began to humiliate Ming, saying that he was very skinny or that Lin Lin just liked this type of guy. Lin Lin also decided to humiliate Ziang a little and asked her if she thinks that everyone is looking for friends only for profit or benefit, like her? The guy thought about the girl's words and did not understand how he could use his friends. Ziang became even more angry and asked Lin Lin to immediately drive the guy away from here. Ming watched it all, he heard every word and realized that he felt a little unhappy. Lin Lin didn't want to drive the guy away, so she asked why she had to do this, after which she stated that it was her friend who shouldn't point him out. Ziang said that her brother is interested in her, and this is already a powerful argument to drive the guy away from here. Lin Lin remained calm and said that this was just wishful thinking about the Wang family and she did not agree with it. 
Lin Lin stood in front of her interlocutor and asked if the Wang family really lives in a feudal society and enters into arranged marriages? Ziang appreciated the audacity of the girl, who began to contradict her and threatened that today her friend would look for his teeth on the ground. Ziang turned towards her lover, hinting that it was worth teaching Ming a lesson. The big man stood in front of the young guy and said that such a small boy could be squeezed in one hand. He grabbed Min's shirt and ordered him to stand up. Min clearly didn't like this behavior, he was not taken aback and responded to the big man with a strong uppercut. The big guy didn't like it and said it hurt, then asked Ming what he had done. Min told the bully that he just slapped him. The dissatisfied bully continued to swing at the guy and assured him that he shouldn't have used sneaky strikes. Ming intercepted this blow as well, the big man's fist was unable to reach the target. Ming held the bully's hand down using one of his techniques. The big man was perplexed that his hand could not move, he tried to understand what the guy had done to him. Ming told the guy that he was strong on the outside, but very weak on the inside, he lacked kidney in energy. The big man swung his other hand towards Min and asked what he was carrying. Min did not wait for the blow and hit him on the cheek with his palm. After that, he let go of the guy's hand and pushed him away, as he had already done with Hao. The defeated enemy flew far away from the guy and landed with a crash on the floor of the restaurant. After he defeated the guy, he decided to turn to Ziang, he wanted to decipher for the girl what in deficiency in the kidneys means. He explained using the example of a revolver that due to the fact that the tip of the barrel is used too much, it begins to look a little rusty, the cruelty is also not the same, you touch it and it breaks. The girl accepted Min's words and they turned out to be true, lately this guy has been behaving really badly. The defeated guy began to yell at the little princess not to listen to Ming, he was just a little tired. Min determined from the guy's pulse that he fired about two hours ago, and if she didn't pull the trigger, then she should check his WeChat. Ziang began to be wary of the stranger's words and asked him if he was sure of what he said. Min did not prove anything and simply asked the girl to check if he wanted. Ziang stood over the lying guy and strictly ordered him to give her his phone. The big man quickly started running away and shouting that he couldn't give him his phone. Angry and shrouded in jealousy, the girl took a knife and began to pursue her lover. Lin Lin appreciated the guy's skills and said that he was very interesting, while choking with laughter. The guy said he wasn't very interesting, it was just that the couple who tried to stop them were very funny. After a small fight, the waitress showed up, all the food was already ready and she asked permission to serve it. Lin Lin assured that it was possible, and Ming was looking forward to how satisfyingly he would eat now. There was just a ton of food on the table, it all smelled delicious and looked very appetizing. Ming's eyes widened, he saw all these dishes for the first time in his life and asked what they were made from. The guy began to sort out the food, but Lin Lin said that everything that happened was her business and the guy shouldn't interfere. The guy asked the girl if they weren't friends, the sixth master told Min that if a friend is in trouble, then you need to stand up for yourself, even at the risk of losing your life. After his words, the guy continued to satisfy his frantic appetite by eating delicious dishes. Lin Lin thought about the guy's words, she realized that this was the only friend who dared to contradict the Wang family for her sake. Ming continued to savor the pork leg, which cannot compare with wild boar, does not feel fatty, and even tastes like fish. Lin Lin explained that it is made from high-quality fish meat, ground into powder and processed again, this one leg requires about 10 kilograms of fish. The guy was shocked by this news and he was thinking about how to make a leg out of a fish. Lin Lin wondered how doctors can determine a lot from the pulse, how did Ming determine what the Ziang guy was doing two hours ago? Min assured the girl that it was much simpler than it seemed at first glance. Lin Lin asked the guy when he could teach her such skills. Min said that she could only be as good as him after 10 years of training. The upset girl asked about the duration of the training and said that the guy promised her that it was simple, he explained that it was really simple, it just took a lot of time to study. Ming said that the disadvantage of martial arts is that they require long-term practice and it is impossible to see the result in a short hour, he also noted that modern people are impatient and cannot wait. The girl immediately changed her mind about studying and invited the guy to have lunch, she realized that she, too, was a modern person and could not wait. The guy said that he came here not only for food, he wants to ask the girl for something, and if his request is very difficult, then he can use one of the three cases that Lin Lin spoke about earlier. Lin Lin asked the guy to tell him everything, 
and if this does not require the intervention of family forces, then her help can be regarded as mutual between friends. The guy took out a phone with a photo that supposedly showed the seventh elder sister and asked the girl to find out where it was. After looking at the photo a little, Lin Lin said it looked like the bottom floor of the HSL building. The guy asked Lin Lin if she knew where it was and received the answer that there weren't many women in the city who didn't know this place, and the Yu family had also collaborated with them before. Joyful Ming also asked if she knew the girl in the photo, he realized that the cooperation had been established and he would soon be able to find the seventh sister. The girl assured that she knew the woman in the photo, but why does the guy need her? It's unlikely that such ladies could have anything in common with him. The guy explained that this was his seventh older sister, as evidenced by the hieroglyph seven on her neck. Lin Lin was seriously surprised by this and asked the guy if the executive director of HSL was really his sister. The guy repeated the job title and said that it sounded very impressive. He asked the girl if she could take him with her to find his sister. Lin Lin explained that before their work together took place through her father and perhaps the other side of her does not know, but for the sake of Ming, the girl is ready to try. After lunch, the couple was already sitting in Lin Lin's sports car and driving in search of her sister. Min decided to ask his friend what she knew and could tell about his seventh older sister. The girl was perplexed by the question and asked in response if she was his older sister, then he shouldn't know her better. The guy explained that his sister came down from the mountain and left when he was still little, so he didn't know her at all and didn't even know her name, but he had to find her now. Lin Lin coldly said that she understood everything, but she thought to herself that the guy was not just an unusual person, but his mountain was a place of sneaking tigers and hidden dragons. Lin Lin began to talk a little about the seventh elder sister, her name is Ji Huanshuang, she is a famous and talented girl in Jiangzhou, she gained this fame about the year before last. Ji Huanshuang was a truly beautiful and spectacular girl who was able to find her fame. Lin Lin said that Ji Huanshuang is very good at all aspects of organization, from selecting products to develop, negotiations, market adaptation, all the way to advertising and marketing, she is considered an all-around genius. Ming thought that his seventh elder sister was truly a wonderful and talented person. Lin Lin did not end there and added that Ji Huanshuang is only 23, which means that she began managing the company at 21 and even then entered the fight in the world market. Later, the girl explained that she knows everything about her only because Ji Huanshuang is an idol for her. Lin Lin also dreams of becoming just like her, who dominates the stage in her early 20s. Ming encouraged the girl and said that he believed in her and noticed that Lin Lin was very smart. The girl picked up the guy's thought and said that maybe if she had not been born into the Yu family, she thought to herself about her relationship with the Wang family. Lin Lin asked not to return to this topic yet, especially since they had almost arrived at their destination. The girl's sports car stopped near the huge company building. The building was of impressive size and therefore gave Ming a strange feeling of pride for Ji Huanshuang. The couple came out and Lin Lin confirmed that this was the headquarters of the HSL company, where they were heading. Min called the girl behind him and said that if this is the case, then they need to go faster. The guy's thoughts were focused on the success of his seventh older sister, he thought that if she worked in such a place, then it was simply amazing. Lin Lin asked the guy to wait, she thought how such a company could let in all sorts of passers-by, a data leak could turn into a disaster. Min was stopped by security guards at the entrance, and they asked him to provide his employee ID. At first Min didn't understand what he was talking about, but then he noticed the cards that all the workers had. Min, without thinking twice, replied that he did not have one. The guards disappointed the guy, they said that it was a pity, but they would not be able to let him in unless he was an HSL employee. The guy said that if he couldn't get in, could the guards help him contact his elder sister Ji Huanshuang. The guards were surprised to hear the name of their executive director, so they asked the guy again. They mocked and did not believe the guy, and one of them said that if this is so, then Chapter 7 Wang is his father-in-law. The guy was outraged that they didn't believe him and asked his sister Ji Huanshuang to come out and as soon as she saw him, everything would become clear, he understood that she would recognize him by his talisman. The guards explained to the boy that if Mrs. Ji went out to everyone like Ming, then she would not be able to do her job, they also advised the boy not to create problems and leave from here. One of the guys took out his phone and said that he should report this to CEO Zhang. He held the phone to his ear and when he finally got through to Zhang, 
he immediately introduced himself and prepared to explain everything. Zhang listened carefully to the man's words and prepared for a story or complaint. The security guard explained to Zhang Ji, who was sitting in his office, that some guy had come and from his mood it seemed that he was trying to create problems for the CEO Ji Huanchuang. Zhang had no intention of solving this and asked the guard to simply send the boy away. The guard said that since it was related to Madame Ji, he decided to report so as not to act on his own, and in response he heard that he would not miss anything related to Ji Huanchuang in the future. The security guard said goodbye to the boss, hung up and put the phone away from his ear. The guard assured himself that as long as he had such a relationship with Zhang, the position of security captain would soon be his. Zhang took out some photograph and began to say that he entered this company only because of Ji Huanchuang and no one dared to touch the flower he was aiming at. The photo was of Ji Huanchuang herself and the guy brought it closer to his face. He kissed the photo and said that Ji Huanchuang would belong only to him. Min was very persistent and said that if the guys didn't let him in, he would stand here and wait until she came out. The guards calmly told the guy that if he wants to wait, then let him stand and wait, the main thing is not to cross the threshold of the door. Then a security guard burst in, talking to Zhang on the phone and pointing out that the guy was poor and that he should get out of here, because his presence here would harm the company's image. The rest of the guards looked at their colleague and tried to find out what was wrong with him, the man didn't want to let the guy stay here because general manager Zhang might come and see that he had failed to drive the boy away. Min was outraged by the arrogance and impudent words of the guard, so he told him that he was still going to drive him away, even if he did not try to get inside, later he asked if he always rushes at everyone like a mad dog. The guard asked the guy how he dared to be insolent to him and instead of words he answered with a strong slap in the face. Ming stood with a small mark of a blow on his cheek. He decided not to respond with a fight for now. The aggressive guard again tried to drive the boy away, saying that if he did not leave, he would hit him again. Lin Lin decided to intervene and asked the man why he was beating people right in the middle of the street. The guy asked Miss Yu to look and notice that he was not the first to start this. Ming adjusted his chin and said that it was the guards who made the first move. Lin Lin was frightened by the expression on Ming's face, who was smiling a little and planning something. The guy hit the offender with an uppercut, after which he even flew up a little. Ming explained that he can restrain his anger, the doctor is merciful in his heart, but he also has a side, he still has some evil left after half a day of insults. Min held the guard by the shirt, and he called his colleagues to help him. The guards did not understand how exactly it had come to this, but a security officer cannot be bullied by outsiders. The mustachioed guard kept offering to hit him and threatening the guy with a crowd of his brothers who would beat the guy up if he touched him. Min did not listen to his words and still struck him in the face. Ming was already standing over the body of his defeated opponent and was preparing to continue beating him. Ming said he had never heard a cheaper request before, but was willing to accommodate it right now. The guy continued to beat the guard and promised him that he would beat the crap out of him right now. The guards ran in a crowd towards the guy promising him that he had found death and would now be very sorry. Meanwhile, the mustachioed colleague was already lying unconscious from the boy's blows. Min turned around when he heard the crowd approaching him. The guy turned around and dealt a powerful blow to another guard, which knocked him out. He was able to knock out another guy with one blow without any problems. And he knocked out another man with a blow to the face. There were no problems with the other guard either, and Min quickly knocked him out. The same fate awaited the last employee of the security department. Ming finished with the guards and remembered the words of the sixth master, who said that when you hit someone, you hit someone in the face, and when you curse someone, you curse the family. Lin Lin looked at the guy with admiration, noticing that he was even looking for the best reason for a fight, everything was according to his plan. The girl placed her hand on her chest in admiration and said that there was definitely something about this guy. He stood under the admiring gaze of Lin Lin against the backdrop of the knocked out guards, the girl noted that he had a wild nature that the townspeople did not have. The guy stood and continued to look at the beaten crowd, expecting to see someone who didn't get enough. Ming ordered them to stand up and fight. Each of them thought that they did not want to rake any more and they were not paid enough to fight to the death. Then a black car, obviously expensive, drove up and stopped next to the couple who were standing at the main entrance. The car door was opened by a woman's gentle hand. It was one of Ji Huanchuang's assistants, who, looking at all this, asked what happened here. 
The lying guard called the girl Chen's assistant and said that they were being beaten, after which he asked to call the police. Chen looked towards Ming and asked the speed bumps, was he the only one who beat them all? A guy with red eyes from anger asked the girl if she was also from this company. Chen was frightened by the guy's gaze, considering that he had just killed all the guards single-handedly. The girl reached for the phone and said in a trembling voice that she would call the police. Then another female voice was heard from the car, asking the same question, what happened, the girl was already getting out of the car. Chen explained to MS, G that someone was causing problems in front of their company and had beaten and injured more than a dozen security guards. Ji Huanchuang stood and listened carefully to what her assistant was saying. Ji Huanchuang asked about the guards and asked how many hooligans there were. Chen said hesitantly that there was only one, which made Ji Huanchuang stupefied. Lin Lin tried to attract Ji Huanchuang's attention and shouted her name, then said that Chu Ming was here. Chu Ming walked up to the lady and asked her if she was the seventh elder sister. Ji Huanchuang stood sternly and looked at the guy with apprehension, preparing to give her answer. There was a short pause between the interlocutors after the guy said that he was Ji Huanchuang's younger brother. The assistant could not find a place, she could not believe that the general director could have a younger brother. Ji Huanchuang was not surprised by the guy's words, she asked him to provide evidence that he was her younger brother, Chen continued to be surprised by this situation. Ming began to look for something in his pockets and assured that he had a token. The guy couldn't find it in his pocket and got really nervous, he couldn't believe that he had forgotten it. He continued to look for it with hope, Min could not believe that he had dropped it during the fight. He had already torn the pocket on his pants, but he still couldn't find the token. Ji Huanchuang confirmed that she has a younger brother, but if the guy cannot prove that he is her brother, then she will call the police, in addition, if he kidnapped her brother, she offers to let him go. The guy was very upset that the seventh sister saw him as a bad person, he also did not understand how he could kidnap himself. But then Lin Lin returned, who said that he had dropped it in the car and threw it into Ming's hands. The guy caught the talisman and thanked the girl, after which he proudly held it at the level of his head. He showed it to his sister and asked her to look at his evidence. Ji Huanchuang immediately recognized these characters and realized that Ming was indeed her brother. Chen asked her boss if she should call the police. Ji Huanchuang assured that there was no need, she needed to discuss something with this gentleman on the top floor, and she also asked not to let them disturb without her knowledge. Chen was surprised that in three years of work she had never gotten into Ji Huanchuang's office, and here she was calling some guy there. Chen also suggested that perhaps the guy really was Madame Ji's younger brother. Ji Huanchuang ordered her brother to follow her, to which he agreed. Chen asked what about the security, which the guy interrupted. Ji Huanchuang ordered the girl to fire them. The timid girl heard the boss's words, and the beaten guards who were lying nearby also heard them. Lin Lin was surprised that the calm Ji Huanchuang, who never acts impulsively, fired more than a dozen people because of Chu Ming. Lin Lin also convinced herself that the Chu Ming sect was a reality. She also noticed that his relationship with his older sister was much higher than he described. The delighted Lin Lin suggested that the guy was clearly going to receive the favor of heaven. The mustachioed instigator of the fight took out his phone and decided that Mr. Zhang should take revenge for his dismissal. Zhang tried to ask the guard what happened and he began to talk about everything that happened. Zhang listened to the guy's story and was outraged that he was fired especially since Ji Huanchuang took that strange guy into her office. Zhang asked the guard to wait for news from him and thought to himself how, having worked for almost a year in the company, he had never been to Ji Huanchuang's office, and the mysterious guy was just let in there. An angry Zhang threw the phone on the floor, after which it broke. He didn't understand Ji Huanchuang's tricks and decided to find out for himself who the mysterious guy was. The elevator went up to the 46th floor. It was Ji Huanchuang's office, it was laid out like some kind of palace. There were gorgeous lamps and even palm trees. Ji Huanchuang assured her brother that he could speak calmly here. Ji Huanchuang added that this floor is her personal space and no one will disturb them. Ming rightly noted that the house looks like a garden. The girl was making coffee and asked her brother if he drinks it and what kind, bitter or sweet. Ming replied that he drinks slightly sweet coffee. The guy watched his sister prepare coffee and realized that he had never drunk it, and the master said that it could be used as medicine. The kind Ji Huanchuang suggested adding more sugar for Ming, 
The guy took the cup in his hands and thanked his older sister. He prepared to try the drink with interest, Min really didn't know what coffee tasted like. Min grimaced and noticed that the coffee was somewhat bitter, what would it taste like without sugar? Ji Huanchuang asked Chu Ming, are these days hard on the mountain? Ming replied that it was not difficult for him at all, he was accompanied by seven masters and was very happy. The girl gently and playfully asked the guy about this. She walked closer to him and took off part of his t-shirt to examine his shoulder. The confused guy did not understand Ji Huanchuang's intentions, so he asked her to stop. The girl thought that the token was not enough to prove her relationship. She remembered the small and crying Min. He had a figure eight shaped birthmark on his shoulder, which also meant he was one of them. The surprised guy tried to ask why she took off people's clothes at the first meeting. Ji Huanchuang saw the birthmark, after which she was completely convinced that it was her brother. The girl hugged the guy and said that this was really her brother Chu Ming, she was very happy to see him and had been waiting for a long time. Surprised, Min asked if it was true that the seventh sister was waiting for him. The guy found it strange that the master hid the seventh sister's aura, but now she says that she was waiting for him. He remembered trying to perform the ritual and find the girl. But he was overcome with pain, this should not make sense if Ji Huanchuang was waiting for her brother. Ji Huanchuang hinted with her question that there was something that the younger brother still didn't know. The girl asked to put your hand on the pulse and then everything would become clear. The guy thought that there was something hidden in the pulsation of the seventh elder sister. A little later, the brother and sister continued their conversation in Ji Huanchuang's office. They sat at the table, where Ming held Ji Huanchuang's hand, trying to feel his pulse. Min didn't understand how this was possible and asked her if the masters knew about this. Ji Huanchuang said that the masters know about her cold body, but the great master cannot cure her, and the younger brother has the right abilities and will help her. Ming remembered the sight of the great master laughing at him. He understood that a cold physique was one of the most difficult celestial flaws described in the ancient texts, and if the old man could not help, then how should he deal with it? Ji Huanchuang asked her younger brother, does he also find it difficult? The guy remembered that in Chinese traditional medicine there are two types of diseases that are difficult to eradicate, heaven deficiency and earth deficiency. Ming explained that heavenly deficiencies are a birth defect, and an extremely cold body is one of them, and if you don't take medicine daily, you will feel as if you are in an ice cave. If Ji Huanchuang said that the master gave her medicine to suppress her shortcomings, but did not tell her how to eradicate them, the girl also asked if her brother knew how to do this. The guy said that he knew how to help, but it was very difficult to carry out the treatment, later he wanted to ask something and took an awkward pause, Ji Huanchuang asked him not to be shy. Min asked if her older sister had someone, the girl assured that not yet, she followed the masters in her youth, then devoted herself to her studies and, without graduating from university, ended up in this company. Ming said that the only way to heal is to practice cultivation together with someone who has young positive energy. Ji Huanchuang indignantly asked about the compatibility of the improvements. The guy replied that this kind of practice will help, only it is not limited to gender, it is enough to exchange vital force. The indignant sister realized that she would have to at least kiss and asked Mina about it. The guy said that everything was correct and besides that, half an hour each time, twice a day for at least six months, to see hope for a cure. Ming saw that even such a great personality as Ji Huanchuang trembles in his heart when he hears something like this. Ji Huanchuang said that six months is a long time for her. She asked if there was any way to shorten the healing time, the guy abruptly spat out his coffee after the girl's words. Ji Huanchuang asked what was the matter, Ming said that everything was fine and there was indeed a way to shorten the time. Ming said that the other way involves closer contact to exchange hidden energy, to merge, you need to achieve a mutually complementary balance of yin yang. Ji Huanchuang said that she understood everything and the master said that she only had a year of life left and she did not have time. Min noticed that children with absolutely cold bodies cannot live to adulthood at all, which means the master thought a lot about how the seventh elder sister could live to these years. The girl stood up and, placing her hand on the edge, said that her younger brother should rest, and she would find a suitable person. Ji Huanchuang thanked the guy for the advice and assured that when her health improves, she will give Ming the things that the master gave for safekeeping. Min said that it doesn't matter now, we need to get rid of the disease first, he asked if his sister was ready for this. 
Ji Huanchuang responded by asking if she had a choice. The guy noticed that he was pleased to talk with his older sister and knew a person with a suitable body. The girl was interested in the guy's words and she offered a good price if this guy would help her. Ming remembered his neighbor Yen and said that she didn't need money and that she was a girl. Ji Huanchuang was even happy about this, she would be able to maintain her innocence. Ming was surprised that his sister turned out to be a traditional person. Ji Huanchuang stated that chastity is a responsibility to the future, and besides, she will not trust her body to just anyone, she has personal boundaries. She also added that she would never use her body for profit. Ming was overjoyed at the news and assured himself that all his older sisters were good. Ming said that he would talk to Yen tonight and asked his sister to leave her number or add it to WeChat. Ji Huanchuang took out her phone and realized that her brother had quickly adjusted to life at the foot of the mountain. The girl's status said towering above the top. The guy was a little confused by his sister's social network account. He noticed that he was really a workaholic and added her as a friend. Min said he would leave first to make an appointment for his sister. Ji Huanchuang stopped her brother and asked him if he was not interested in why the masters asked him to come to her. The guy thought it was to treat a disease, but apparently he was wrong. The girl said that too, but she was responsible for giving Ming the task from their seven saints sect. Ji Huanchuang continued her thought, saying that this belongs to Chu Ming, the mission of the seven saints sect. The guy asked about the mission of their sect. The girl said that the sect of the seven saints, because all of its seven masters are supreme geniuses in various fields, its teachers are, respectively, the holy physician, the holy fortune teller, the holy hexagram, the holy in the arts, the holy alchemist, the holy warrior and the holy Tao. They were all powerful and famous, they got together and founded the now dilapidated sect of the seven saints, the guy remembered this place looks like there is not even a decent gate and suggested that all these stories of greatness were made up. The guy asked the seventh elder sister to announce the task from the masters. The girl agreed and asked Chu Ming to listen carefully, she took something out of her bracelet, where the talisman was. It was a scroll with a message written to Chu Ming, she began to read it out loud, there the masters warned the guy not to be fascinated by the city and the task itself said that if he was able to accept a direct disciple within three months, then the seventh elder sister would give him treasure of the seven saints. Ming immediately recognized the tone of the masters and noted that it would be difficult for him to accept the student, because he knew a small number of people. Ji Huanchuang said that this is a test for the guy, if he can't find one disciple, then how can he talk about creating a sect? The guy took the message into his own hands and said that he would work hard. Ji Huanchuang noticed that her younger brother did not have a job yet and invited him to join her company. Ji Huanchuang warned the guy that there would be no concessions and he must pass the interview on his own, but with his skills it would not be a problem to get a job in the security department. The guy said that if he stayed, then gossip would start about his sister, even if he could go through everything on his own, then everyone would think that he was let in through the back door. Min said that judging by the image of his sister, she should not like gossip, and he himself is not happy with it. Ming headed towards the exit, and Ji Huanchuang thought about how the masters would pamper their younger brother. But to her surprise, he grew up much better than she expected. The girl was glad to meet her brother and, as an older sister, could not help but show at least some reaction when she saw Ming. A notification arrived on the guy's phone. He took it out and was surprised to see that it was a message from Ji Huanchuang. The girl asked to treat the guy and then transferred him 10,000 yuan. The guy, seeing the amount, thought how much food he would need to eat before the money ran out. The guy was happy with the money he received and reassured himself that he couldn't refuse his older sister's gifts. Finally, the elevator went down to the first floor of the building. The joyful guy decided that he now needed to buy groceries and prepare a good dinner in order to talk with Qin Yen, on whom the life of his older sister depended. Ming didn't pay attention to the fact that it was already dark outside, Lin Lin had probably already left, so this time he would have to run back himself. He looked on his phone to see how far he was from home, but then the guy was called out by Lin Lin, who was still waiting for him. Lin Lin asked why the guy was so surprised, did he not want to see her here? The guy asked the girl, was she really waiting for him here all the time? She began to fuss, saying that suddenly she had moved here right now. The guy asked if his girlfriend had been waiting for him here since noon. The girl did not find the strength to answer the first time. In the second breath, Lin Lin explained that she was worried that the guy might not remember the way home. 
Min thanked the girl and invited her to eat with him. The girl didn't think for a long time and agreed, after which she asked what the guy would feed her. The guy took out the gifted coupon and said that they would eat there. Lin Lin was a little upset, she didn't expect that there were guys who invited girls there. But no matter how strange it may seem, she does not reject the offer. The couple sped off in an expensive car away from the company building. Zhang stood on the balcony with a phone in his hands. The guy on the other line told Zhang that Ming got into the car with the girl and asked if he should follow the couple. Zhang ordered to follow him and kill him, to which he received a question that they seemed to be going to investigate the guy's past. Zhang said that there is no need, the Zhang family is not afraid of anyone in this city. Zhang ended the conversation with his interlocutor. The angry man clutched the phone in his hand and thought that this time the boy entered Ji Huanchuang's office, but if he entered her home next time, Zhang would lose face. He has already announced to everyone that he will get Ji Huanchuang and does not want used goods, those who cross his path die, Zhang said. The couple drove up to the store with the chicken. Min knocked on the door and then said that he would eat very well today. The delighted guy and Lin Lin walked inside and he noticed a wonderful smell that could be smelled from the front door. The killer stood hidden and watched the couple. Then a group of people got out of the car and apparently wanted to harm Ming. The killer turned out to be a mustachioed security guard who was beaten in front of the company today, he pointed at Min and told his guys that this was the goal. The angry scumbag took out a knife and told everyone that if there was a chance to take him alive, then they should just tie him up and sell him to his brother, so they could carry out orders and earn more money.